Welcome to the um, Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner meeting of June 28th, 2023 at six o'clock tonight at the Town Hall in, in Deerfield, South Deerfield, 8 Conway Street. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearings will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. So good evening. Uh, everybody's staying dry. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. It's wicked down for us. Um, we have public comment. Anybody available? Chris, I'm sorry. I see that you had called, but um, I was okay. on. No, no, so I definitely wanted to take advantage of public comment, and I'll try to keep it to two minutes, but um, obviously coming out of uh, the uh, 350th celebration weekend events, I, I wanted to make some comments on that, and um, really it's a bunch of thank yous to people because um, it was a fantastic weekend. D despite the weather, everybody pivoted, everybody was flexible. Uh, I, I couldn't imagine how people came together to make all that happen. But first of all, thank you to the select board throughout the whole year. You've been very supportive of the 350th um, steering committee and the Friends of Deerfield and all the things we're trying to do together and collaborate. So um, the 350th steering committee has been great partners with the Friends of Deerfield, which is a separate nonprofit. Um, but uh, but it's a collaborative uh, work. Uh, the parade work group did a great job between Holly, Kelly, Rocky, and their team. Um, it really, I mean, to pull that off in, in that window is pretty amazing. And so I, I haven't seen the whole video of the parade yet. Um, I know it's out there because uh, it was live streamed. But I, I think we all had a lot of fun and we made it happen despite the weather. So, um, and the Brave Work Group was instrumental, obviously, in making that happen. Um, you know, when you get to the other uh, activities on the weekend, uh, the South Deerfield Fire District, uh, uh, Chief Swayze and Kurt Seaman were fantastic collaborators. And I heard that from North Star Fireworks. They were very impressed with working with our fire department. And, uh, and they called me, literally called me and, and told me that. And so that's a, that's a big deal. We don't need state fire marshals inspecting when there's that type of collaboration of professionals. And, um, and then the Deerfield Police Department with Chief Swayze and Adam Sokolowski and their team did a fantastic job. Everything seemed to work well in both South Deerfield and Old Deerfield for all these activities. Um, uh, and then uh, Kevin Scarborough and Chris Miller and the highway department team, great job in terms of supporting us and we're wherever we needed. And it was all done professionally, upfront, nothing, nothing to, you know, worry about at all between posting flags and putting up snow fencing for fireworks. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I mean, and um, it, it, I really appreciated working with them. And so um, the other thing too is that um, just to call out, you know, a lot of people didn't know that chicken barbecue we served 700 persons <laughs> over those hours of what eight hours, and um, and the South Deerfield Polish Americans Club roasted those chickens. They did a great job. They were not done at Deerfield Academy. They were wonderful. They were done in South Deerfield. And then there were shuttles going back and forth and everything. And I'll be honest with you, I, I that whole formula I didn't really um, appreciate initially. I thought they would be cold, but they were not cold. The food no. was not cold. So the experts did their thing and the professionals did their thing. And so I really appreciate that. I mean, a couple of people you know, were associated with that barbecue too were Kathleen Thomas 
Catering and Berkshire Brewing Company. They're and wonderful. they have been working with us on events since January or December 31st, all the way through. Yeah. They have been collaborating with the Friends of Deerfield to do these types of major events and, and the other things that have been done with the 350 Steering Committee, whether it's the Founders Day weekend or whatever. The, those companies have always catering um, professionals have always been with us. And it's a big deal um, um, because it goes a lot more smoothly because we don't have the credibility, the professionalism to to carry out this in terms of safe, um, you know, uh, serving of food and alcohol. We don't have that. And they've been there for us. Um, I guess the other thing too is uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, Mike McKenna and his team there, fantastic in terms of hosting the fireworks site, but just total collaboration there. And, and then of course, for the chicken barbecue, Deerfield Academy and, and the team there, Tessa Doubleday and Matt Sheehy, um, really appreciate working with them. It's been a great collaboration. Um, you know, on behalf of our entire board of the Friends of Deerfield, and that includes uh, Stan Adams, uh, Marie Thomas, and Alex Hershenretter right now, um, you know, we're, we look forward to collaborating with um, the town and the 350 Steering Committee on future events. Um, and it looks like we're lining up stuff for mid-September and mid-October terms of major events. And then there's four more speaker events too. And um, you can count on the friends of Deerfield to be supportive um, and collaborative throughout that. But I, I guess I wanna say one thing is that whether it comes to the Jubilee uh, dinner dance or to the chicken barbecue, or even to the friends of Deerfield participating in the parade, um, Stan Adams has been the leader. Yeah. And his expertise and his attention to detail and his, his time and effort, never mind, he gives a lot of financial contributions to these efforts too. Uh, it's just truly appreciated. I mean, you, we never could have pulled this out without someone of that caliber, that experience being on the ground in Deerfield. Yeah, second that. It was wonderful. You all wonderful. Thank you, Chris, for everything you did as well. You know, acting humbly like you didn't do much and you had a big team. You did. You, everybody did so much work and it's wonderful. I don't, I don't know how you did it. You were cra crazed yeah. with all the pivoting of activities and Weather. but Stan's Stan's um, decorations are fabulous and we have a couple minutes. I just want to say that um, thank you to Jeffrey Hubbard from Sunderland yeah. who drove our um, select board float. Um, we didn't have bells hanging on it because of the weather. We had a Tim Hilchey designed roof instead, <laughs> but it was so it's beautiful. Nice. It, well. it, it was so beautiful that the stopped raining during the parade. I mean, it rained before, we rained after. We had so many volunteers as, as Chris alluded that it was the fire um, department, the highway department did so much, but the police department and Adam Sokolowski mm -hmm. in particular, the hard. vent planner guy, um, <laughs> handled all the changes, pivoting of the activities and changes that occurred because of the weather. It was pretty a wonderful event. Um, and I just have to say that um, everybody did work together. It was really lovely. It felt like a personal um, celebration. And people were genuinely happy. And it was just really nice. Yep. And okay. it was wonderful. So do you want to add in? I also just wanted to thank Jim McGovern, Matt, and Natalie Blay, Joe mm -hmm. Comfort, um, Ashley Randall from Deerfield, and uh, and Kristen Ellico, too, for, for coming out, spending time with Deerfield to celebrate. Yep. yep. We have to send thank you notes to everybody. Everybody was really just upbeat. Fireworks and, are amazing too. And the fireworks were amazing. Mm -hmm. After Chris, after it seemed like I don't know, right up until um, the, the last minute, even yeah. the weather, it was just a nightmare trying to get fireworks somewhere down here in South Deerfield. And it <laughs> just came together beautiful. I mean, it was just lovely. So thank you. Yep. Thank you all. 
we really appreciate everyone working together. Um, so uh, we're a couple minutes early, but um, why don't we, uh, by the time you get up here, why don't we just talk about accepting the roads? Um, Bruce, why don't you? Bruce isn't here. Oh, Bruce, Bruce isn't here. No. Well, no. I know uh, Mark is, so come on up. Well, I'm going to take care of this. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I thought Bruce was going to come. Oh, okay. Oh, great. great. Well, why don't you oh, come up? Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Okay. You've done your part. <laughs> yeah, Bruce is the one that has been emailing us. <laughs> We do appreciate it. Um, you just have to introduce yourselves and uh, so that our audience knows. I'm Wendy Fuller. I'm at, from 3A Great Rock Lane, Sugarloaf Condos. Yes, Tony Wenceski, Civil Engineer, SVE Associates. Mark Fabiano, it's 3B Great Rock Lane, South Deerfield. Welcome. Okay, welcome. 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 So, um, Bruce had emailed us, and this is about the acceptance of. Snowberry Circle and Greylock Lane. Yes, that's correct. We're um, in the last processes of what we intended when we started the project. I think preliminary plan might have been back in 2015, approvals in 2016, um, through construction, through COVID, mm. getting everything um, built and sold and um, finishing all of the improvements and um, so fulfilling our requirements with the planning board as far as subdivision approval, uh, performance guarantee, covenants, and then as-built plans, we've gone through all of that process. And so the final step is to come back to the select board. And I think you received a letter from the um, association. Mm -hmm. The association owns all the property now. The developer doesn't have any rights and title to the property. Um, so the association would be the appropriate entity to come to the select board and petition the select board to initiate the um, the layout of the roads as public ways. And there are two, it's Snowberry Circle and um, Greylock Lane. And so with that petition, we do have the second item that's required um, per the state laws. And I believe also from the, uh, the town uh, municipal bylaws is to supply the select board with a street layout plan. And I have those here this evening. So we'll leave those with you. Um, and the third thing, which we hope can happen maybe this evening, um, is that the select board would vote having this information to uh, initiate the layout process. And what that does after that, it gets kick back down to the planning board for review. I think they have 45 days to review and come back with a report. It's not binding to the select board um, to allow the process to continue. Um, once that happens, then um, based on the report and your review, I, I believe the process goes to you public noticing a meeting where you would at that time um, uh, vote to um, take it to town meeting for actual acceptance. Once that acceptance happens, I believe because it's a subdivision approval through the planning board, it's only majority vote. Um, it then would be um, the actual transfer of the title from the association to the town. Um, and the way that I did that, it's very specific and Kevin is, understands that process. Um, we kept everything that's within the street right away as public. So it's very discernible what's public and private. Everything outside that um, that is related to drainage mostly because every sewer and water within the public way, but we have the large drainage basins and pipes and leaching, well, not leaching, but um, sand traps and mm -hmm. things like that, are, which were required by the stormwater management regulations in town. Um, we provided easements to the town and all that. Those have been granted when each sale has gone through. So the town has right of ways, uh, rights to get in there and, and inspect that and review that. Um, but we didn't think that it would be proper to burden the town with those maintenance areas because it's an association, they'll take care of everything, all of those right. grounds. So that's the way we set it up. Mm -hmm. um, and so we would um, you know, just like to move forward with that. And um, 
I, I believe that's an engineer's interpretation of where we need to go, but you'll get full guidance from your council and app and so forth. Well, we right now we have a tentative scheduled town meeting for October 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, no guarantee that we're going to have a fall town meeting, yeah. but we're planning potentially a couple things that we would bring up as well. So we want to work back from that date. Right. So it seems like we have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. right. And especially if we start the process tonight by saying that, yeah, yeah that we would vote to have, in, it's our intent to um, start the layout process. Um, so do either one of you have any questions? Okay. No, we have got the, got right. the plans. Right. We have um, actual, a uh, set of mylars and two sets of plants. So you can okay. supply the planning board with one. And right. I would suggest you keep the mylar in one set of plants. Yep. And we can get prints. Um, we can get prints if there's any of needed from the office. Thank you. But um, uh, I think that's probably sufficient for us yep. to go through the process. Yep. So um, I would entertain a motion. No. Is there a verbal oh. or is this a verbal petition or do you have a written no, petition? I think the letter it? came from Bruce. And yeah. We yes, it does. We have a copy here okay. if you need the that. June yeah. 9th. Okay, good. Yep. No, I see it. It's, yep. it's just double sided, you know, it's saving trees. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, so there's a formal request. Good. And we are um, initiating the process. So I would, I would just take a motion to start the process of layout, which means that we would um, send this to the planning board. Yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. I have um, one question on that. Yes. Um, so is it okay with all three of you if I record that vote and use your signature stamps on it tomorrow so that I can formally send that to the planning board and we have it documented? Yes. 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 Fine with me. Yes. Okay. So um, I will do that then. Thank you. Is that I, okay with you? Yeah, I said Why don't yes. I mo modify my amendment to uh, approve our stamp okay well let's revote that just in case um we're... i'll second it thank okay. you to revise motion to use the stamp mm -hmm. all those in favor tim Hilchey, aye. trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye. yes chris thank, thank use, you you can use the stamp um and you can get it going tomorrow um all right so you what you will do chris is you will make sure this gets on the uh, select the planning board agenda the next planning board agenda. Yes, I will definitely let them know. Okay. okay. Um, I believe that's the only thing that we have to do at the moment. Is that correct, Chris? Yeah. Uh, on that matter, yes. Yeah, if you're comfortable with that, then we can get that moving forward. Okay. I believe that's the only thing that we have to do, right? Excellent. I believe that's true. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you for coming in. Great. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. Um, all right. Uh, next item on the agenda is um, a continuation of the dog hearing. Um, are we at 6.30 yet? Or? Yeah, do you want to do some? Yeah, we some should. Stuff? Yeah, because we should wait till 6.30. Yeah. Um, since that's a formal request. You want to make a motion on the minutes? Yes. That. Would you, um, I will take a motion on the yes. February 28th minutes. So make a motion to approve the February 28th minutes. Yes, to them in this pile. Just find them here real quick. Here they are, yep. And I had a question for Chris on one of them, but yeah. Uh, so make a motion to approve the February 28th minutes, 5.30 p.m. And I'll second that. Um, any more discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. How about March 28th? Make a motion to uh, approve March 28th, 2023 minutes, 5.30 p.m. Did you... I just want to take a quick glance at this. Yes, please. That was my birthday. I, did, I don't recall being here, so. Um... No, you weren't. you weren't present. So um, I'll second the motion. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, you were in California having a good time. Yes. Although, you know. Well he, deserved. He, he did zoom in some of these, but I'll zoom, zoom in on this one. Yeah. Some of it. 
I thought I did, but so I, I wanted to clarify, Chris, there were two minutes listed as April 6th. And I think the way they are, the first one is actually the April 6th minutes, and then the second one might be the 12th. We think it's the 12th because that was when we did the electors. I I think the heading just didn't get replaced. That is a good observation that I will definitely make the change on for that. Because I think you're right. So make a motion to approve the April 6, 2023 minutes. Um, Tim Hill, you'll second that. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then I'll make a motion to um, have April 6 minutes revised, uh, the second set revised to April 12, 2023. And um, have Chris a, verify. Verify the date, uh, approve the minutes. Second. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hill, G.I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. Right. And I think that's it for minutes. Um, we still have a couple minutes. So why don't you come up, um, Allison, and talk about Treehouse so that you guys can go home before it gets really mm -hmm. icky out and dark. <laughs> yeah. More Thank thunder you. showers. Appreciate Thank you uh, accommodating us. Sure. No problem. We're really excited um, that you're having such a good response to the um, half marathon. Uh, we were hoping that you were, would do a 5K or 10K, but <laughs> having you do the half marathon, I have to say, for September 17th is very exciting. Yes. So um, we'd love to hear your request. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, just, I don't know if I need to do this for the record, but yes. Allison Maisley here from Treehouse and Sarah Maggi Morin from Treehouse Brewing Company. Thank you. So, Welcome. Thank you. And I also just want to say, Chris, on there, thank you. Uh, you know, it's been such a, an honor to be able to work with you and the Friends of Deerfield for, you know, we were able to do the fireworks with you guys at our property. So that was really wonderful. Yes. And, uh, you know, thank you for being an amazing sort of person to work with to make that go off without a hitch. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And we're particularly excited that um, this half marathon is coinciding with the 350th. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Really That's exciting. Could yeah. be a lot better if we tried. <laughs> <laughs> so we're very lucky that you guys are uh, celebrating your 350th this year. And we're right. excited that, yeah, our half marathon is taking place at that time. Yeah. Um. So what you're looking for is, my understanding, is the soccer field you need to expand. Yes. Okay. So why don't you tell us about it just so everybody in the audience is aware Absolutely. of that. Absolutely. And um, Chris, I don't know if you got my email earlier. Would you be able to share that slide? Deck? I did, if that's okay with the board. Sure, please. Sure. I will share that right now. Everybody see that? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we can move ahead to slide number two. So again, you know, with the 350th happening, we are so excited by how well received this half marathon has been. Um, in fact, it's sold out in a relatively short amount of time, I want to say one or two days. And so we wanted to come before you today uh, with this request for a one day pouring permit for malt beverages, uh, so that we could open up the event to more people. Um, we are requesting this pouring permit to take place current on our currently unlicensed part of the treehouse premises, which is that north soccer field. And I believe it is about 147,000 square feet, yeah. um, give or take a few. And how many um, square feet did you say it was, Allison? 147,000 147, yeah. square feet. So if you'd okay. like to go to the next slide. Oh, so. oh okay. Can, yeah, can, can you show you where that uh, field field. Yep. is? So, yep, that entire area in red there is currently unlicensed. And that is where we are requesting this one day permit so that we could have an additional 1,500 attendees, either spectators or runners. Mm -hmm. And, Carolyn, to your point of it, being a 5k versus a half marathon you'd be surprised by the amount of runners that want to do this <laughs> yeah i know i was really shocked that you sold out uh 1500 slots in the first day or two mm -hmm. i mean that's wow mm -hmm. so our very first day um 
we sold in the one day 1100 uh, registrations for okay. runners. Um, it is one of the most popular uh, inquiries that we've gotten every day since is, is there going to be another wave? Um, there's just a whole lot of excitement coming to Deerfield in the fall. I think we're yeah. going to be peak at right. that time. It's just going to be beautiful. And we're excited to be kind of part of the highlight of the uh, part of the highlighted events throughout the year. So because of the demand for running, we're really looking at this to open it up further to the running community. Right. Um, most of which the first folks that will get word on this will be folks that already registered. So they're going to tell their friends that yeah. missed out on the first. So we look at this as opening this event to more runners. There will be additional spectators that yeah. naturally come, but we're really trying to cater to this running community that met this so enthusiastically to, to try to come um, this way out to Western Mass, out to South Deerfield. And, um, you know, you're aware of this, Carolyn, in previous conversations, but we're, this isn't, you know, we're fumbling our way through our local turkey trot. We really went to the best folks on this, yeah. an outfit called the MSC. They run the Boston Marathon. They run Falmouth Road Race. Um, huge, huge scale events. This is very, very tiny for them, but um, we're going to start and we're going to do it right the first time. And then maybe in the future, we'll add five days. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, this is amazing turnouts already. So does anyone have any questions? Just to, uh, just to yeah. ease to your mind, I do have one last slide. Yeah. Um, and as Sarah mentioned, that we are currently working with the MSE, so the best of the best that we could come up with. But we are also making sure to work closely with the town. Uh, we've been coordinating with the 350th Steering Committee, Deerfield Police, Fire, um, and EMS, just to make sure every single detail that we could possibly think about for this event is thought of and that we execute it without uh, you know, any issue. Um, for parking, we are providing additional offsite parking. Um, we have two lots from Yankee Candle, uh, one across the street, and then one right by 95, I believe it was the old warehouse. Oh, yep. And then um, UMass and Greenfield Community College as well. So we'll be doing shuttle service from those locations just okay. to make sure that there's not a huge influx of traffic in Deerfield that day. Yeah. There won't be any roads closed, but we will have cones along the side of it. Um, and then for restrooms, because I know that is, uh, you know, something that you guys <laughs> want to make sure we have enough of, yeah. we will be doing portable toilets for the day of the event only. Um, so 14 additional portable toilets will be brought in um, and they will be removed shortly after the event. So, the, yeah, these were definitely my questions. How do you figure on the parking and and working with the fire and police um have you have you guys laid out the the route yet yes and, and you worked with everybody on that mm -hmm. okay and do you briefly can you briefly explain what it is is it is it on roadways is it on just running around the fields just you running know, criterium Very easy. <laughs> right you know um, okay. no, so yeah. the, <laughs> we'll take us south on route five we'll cut across where um that yankee candle area is i believe it's going to come up River Road and then come back over in a loop to North Hillside, where we'll come back to. Um, it's all house. in Deerfield. All yeah. the entire thing is in Deerfield. Deerfield. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and this fifteen hundred is that? That's all the runners. What about your regular business? Is that going to be curtailed until after the race, or? Yeah. Um, so this event is closed to runners and spectators. Um, so in order to have access to our campus that day, you will have to be a registered runner or a ticket holding spectator. So okay. it is not open to the public that day. It is for this one right. day special event. I, I, I just want to explain to people um, the parking, the whole parking thing, um, because people have to have a parking ticket. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because that's how you control the number of cars. If you have a ticket, you can park. And if you don't have a ticket, you can't park. You have to have a shuttle. So um, I totally understand that. And I actually appreciate you doing this. And this is how you can control the number of cars on the campus. Okay. So thank you. I know there was a couple complaints about that with the fireworks and stuff like that, but there's nothing you can do. You just can't have massive amount of cars showing up at the last mm -hmm. minute. 
and we like people to know where they're parking ahead of time so they don't create sort of a cluster around this area and you know oh maybe i can park at the brewery and then they can't so they go somewhere else we'd rather them know ahead of time yeah they go where they're supposed to be absolutely yeah. and uh, so i know people had complained about you know having to get a parking ticket but that's the only way that you can really control the numbers so yeah. anyway have you sold out your parking not yet you'd be surprised at the amount of spaces we have at umass and greenfield that people were not ready to commit to parking at yet <laughs> okay well but your main campus that's full yep. yeah thank you i just wanted to if somebody asked me i could say you're gonna have to park remotely and be shuttled in so. absolutely yeah. excellent is there any other questions yeah. all right i'll entertain a motion to approve this um i'll make that motion i'll second the motion any further discussion hearing none all those in favor tim hilchi aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye I want to thank you. Thank you for coming in. I also know through our conversations, Allison and Sarah, that you will be updating um, the steering committee and, and by de facto the Friends of Deerfield and we'll work closely together. We have a July, um, July 31st and um, August 28th meeting before your event. So if you don't mind just coming for an update, you know, you, they're virtual. So just zoom in and that would be great. A much easier drive for me. I yes. appreciate it. Yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah. We are, uh, if you, you know, if any comments come up, please let us know. Yes. If uh, and we look forward to updating the steering committees as we go. And just Absolutely great. Continue to work with obviously well, Adam and the and yeah. Chief Absolutely. And Yes. Adam great. and the Chief have been a tremendous help. Yeah, that's I, great. That's I have great. to say Adam has been really amazing with all the events that happened in the month of June and now yeah. right into the fall. So thank Good. you very thank much you. for coming. Yeah. Have a great day. Careful. I'm See? getting binged with all the lightning strikes still. So yeah. Yeah. Good. yeah. So bye. Take care. Be careful going home. Um it is 6 30. Um I don't see anyone here for the they're probably all remote. Are they all remote? Probably remote. For the continuation of the dog hearing? Do we have any members representing? Yeah. Um, well, we have a request to continue the hearing. And um, personally, I don't have really an issue about that. But um, in my mind, there is a gap between what we did two weeks ago and continuing the hearing to the next available meeting. And I, I just want to make it clear that we have to have um, with the dog confined to the property properly so that no one would get bitten further. Um, that would be my concern. I don't know if either one of you want to um, address this. Matt, um, our, as our lawyer, um, well, let's hear the request. Uh, we have the written request. So, Kate, would you like to um, discuss this further? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so, I have hired an attorney by the name of Jeremy Cohen. Could you talk just a little louder, Kate? Your volume is down. I have hired an attorney by the name of Jeremy Cohen who was on this call I am, about two years ago. I am right so here. I'm, just, I'm going to let him speak on my behalf. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Good evening. Down. Can you see me, hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can. Okay. Yep. And thank you for uh, even considering this request. And um, to the extent that we were seeking it is, it's just to get a better sense of, of where the dog is, is really at right now. Um, and to give everybody a sense of, of what might have happened and, and really what the likelihood of, of this happening again is, it's because this is an aberration for the dog. But me, so meantime, and this would be an evaluation by a behavioral consultant, it can take a little bit to find somebody with free time, but, um, I could work with Matt so that 
all information that you have is communicated to that person, and then they can send a report even directly to you. And then, um, but meantime, to keep it keep the community safe, I understand the um, the request to keep the dog confined to the property, and I so I think that's reasonable as well. Uh, can I just um, ask a process question of our, our town council? Yeah. Um, so, Matt, um, what do we need to do in terms of taking in new new information? I mean, we've closed the hearing. So the question becomes, do we have to put out a new hearing notice, re-advertise, open a new hearing, or can we just do this tonight and say we're we're going to reopen the hearing. I mean, I just don't know what the law says about this. So if you could explain briefly, that would be appreciated. Or so, and, and for the benefit of Mr. Cohen, what happened at the last meeting was Excuse that the board me, Matt, opened. Matt, I just I'm sorry. I just need you to identify your uh, yourself as our lawyer. Sure, of course, Ms. Ness. Uh, Matthew Preventure, Town Council for the Town of Deerfield. Um, so at the, at the last hearing, which took place on June 14th, the public hearing was opened. Um, the board heard testimony from a number of witnesses, including Chief Petrarch as the complainant, um, Sergeant Jennifer Bartak and Mr. James King, two of the people who were involved with incidents with the dog on April 7th and May 10th, 2023, along with the animal control officer for the town, Colleen Giorgio. Um, at that point, uh, Ms. Clayton Jones also testified the board asked her if she had any other evidence or information she wished to submit um, and was told at that time no. So the board therefore closed the hearing and continued only the portion of the hearing to vote on the conditions it would order as a result of the finding of dangerous that it, that it reached after the um, public evidentiary portion of the hearing. So what I construe Mr. Cohen's request as is to reopen the hearing to take additional evidence that was not able to be submitted because he wasn't involved at that time. Now, be that as it may, my understanding is that Ms. Clayton Jones is the only person with an interest in this hearing. She's the only person who could be aggrieved by a determination, therefore. And you did, in fact, continue the hearing, despite the fact that you closed the evidentiary portion of it, to this date and time certain. So I think that it's acceptable under the circumstances to further continue this hearing to another date and time certain, um, indicating that you're going to reopen the evidentiary portion of it in your discretion to afford Mr. Cohen the opportunity to present something that he feels very strongly he should get into the record. I don't think there's a technical issue with that um, under the law. For the, for the sake of transparency, I think it would make sense to re-notice if you feel that's appropriate. And I think the other thing to do here is to ask Mr. Cohen if he has any issues with any technical issues or procedural requirements of a continued hearing in this respect. Do you, Mr. Cohen? Oh, thank you. Uh, I do not. The only um, thing I'm thinking of is it, in terms of the next, when the next hearing would be, is with, as I said, behavioral consultants, they're few and far between. It can be tough to get them. But with the holiday weekend, um, when were you looking at? We don't want to extend it. Is the, is to have something to you before uh, well, when do you meet? Do you generally meet on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday? We have a uh, meeting on the 12th, but um, truthfully, we're, we have already a pretty, um, our agenda is pretty full. Um, the next meeting after that is July 26th. Okay. We will commit, you will have something before that over to, I'll send it to your lawyer so he, he can review it. He can contact the person who ends up doing this, I'll run the person past him. If he wants to make any suggestions about who to go to, certainly open to that, but that will be plenty of time. Um, what I would request is that you give us the information by July 19th so that um, our lawyer has a chance to look at it. Plus we do as well if we have any questions because this needs to be posted, um, you know, our agendas, we try to get our agendas done by Friday. Okay. Um, the 21st. So if we had any questions um, or problems, I, I, we would like the information at least a couple days before we post our agenda. Okay. Thank you. Uh, that is uh, extremely uh, appreciated. Next step. Thank you. 
Um, so our, I, I don't have any problem. We could vote on this, but I, my concern again is um, the safety of people. I fully um, agree that the dog is a working dog. Dog is a working dog. Kate, one second, Kate. Kate. Just can you wait till the chair finishes? Um, like I said, my concern is that this is a working dog who was brought to this area as Kate presented um, because the dog was loose, is confused about its territory. I think it's really critical that the dogs stay on the property, confined on the property. And I, we need to have that guaranteed um, in my mind. That has to be guaranteed before and, we vote positively on continuing. And, yeah, and I just want to clarify what confined on the property means because um, twice the animals escaped a uh, fenced-in area. And so, you know, does that mean that the animal is going to be contained inside the fences that currently exist, the strengthened fences, or, um, that's right. you know, the dog could wander the perimeter of the property if it was trained to not leave the property. So I don't want it outside alone under any circumstance. Yeah, I would, I would agree. That's what I meant. So in I, the fenced area. in the fenced area that Kate has said that she has, um, reinforced, right? reinforced right before our hearing last time. So can you just repeat the condition? Conditions would, oh, go ahead, because I, I, I've got it. My feeling is that the dog should be maintained inside the fenced area. Uh, I, don't, I don't think defining it as on the property is sufficient. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Right. Uh, and I would agree with that. That's my major concern. It's really just safety. And, um, you know, I, I think that's got to be, that's critical to my support of this vote. So, Kate, and can you speak up a little louder when you talk, Kate? But do you understand they're saying confined within the fence in area? I know you've made improvements on it, but this is, they're giving us the extra opportunity. So we need to make sure that they understand you're going to do what you can to keep everybody feeling safe. So, what I'm understanding is that within the town of Deerfield, right, within the town of Deerfield, Theo needs to be confined to the fenced-in area that I have spent a lot of time and effort in, uh, securing. I would welcome the animal control officer to come over and inspect our fences to make sure that they are within the, um, the, the perimeter because we've actually put two fences up. If Theo needs to go to the vet or something like that, he will be on leash in the town of Deerfield. So I value safety just as much as everybody else. And so my understanding is, is that when he is loose, he needs to be completely within the confines of the fenced-in area. The fenced-in area has also been posted to warn people that not to enter without permission. And it also has clips on it so that somebody coming in really does have to work very hard to get into that area. Thank you. I feel Thank you. Do you feel okay? No, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood what we were communicating, yes. and I think we all do now. Yep. So thank you so much for that. Matt, do you have anything more to say um, before we vote on this? I do. I have um, just two quick process questions. One is that I want to confirm on the record with Mr. Cohen that the continuance is solely for the purpose of presenting the dog behavioral expert report he alluded to in his letter and that he doesn't want to revisit or reopen any other areas of testimony. Um, certainly, I'll agree to that, As and I'm hoping the town will heed the same, that it's not for any other evidentiary purpose, right. unless okay. something, unless there's something that happened, you know, since, since tonight. But other than that, there'll be no testimony from my client, no argument, things like that. 
Okay. And then the, um, the, the second thing I have is that based on Ms. Clayton Jones statement that she would welcome an inspection, the board should consider, I think, whether to take her up on that and having the animal control officer take a look at the conditions that exist as part of, you know, extending the time. It's going to be almost a month. I think it makes sense for the board to consider whether it wants to have the officer go out and evaluate the property and make sure that it's um, suitable for the duration of time that's at issue, given the potential harm to the public. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. All right. Uh, is that condition um, okay with you, Kate? Yep. Okay. Great. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Um, so just to confirm the days, we're talking continuing the hearing um, to July 26th. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with with information available to us by the 19th. Right. If it is not available to us by the 19th, then by the 19th we get another request for continuance. Yeah, I I, I think that that should be sufficient time to answer the questions that we have. So mm -hmm. um, I'll make a motion to um, continue the hearing until. July 26, with the understanding that we will be receiving additional information, uh, the, the, the loan additional information we're waiting for on the 19th. And um, I'll second that motion. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you so much for this and for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's all right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, Matt, for coming. And out. thank you, Matt. Yes, appreciate you coming. Happy um, to be here. Does the board require anything further from me? I'm happy to stay if necessary. No, all set. No, all thank set. You. Um, I don't night. think we have anything. Have Have a nice night. Thank you very much. You all have a good evening. Yeah. Bye bye. Um, next up is our Energy Resources Committee on Energy Audits. David and Lori, if you could come up and introduce yourselves and talk to us about all this exciting stuff that's happening. Great. Hello, everybody. I'm David Gilbert Keith, chair of the Deerfield Energy Committee, and I'm here to talk about audits. And I'm Lori Busada, also on the Deerfield Energy Committee, and here to support David. <laughs> Hi. Um, first, let me thank you guys for doing this all the time. <laughs> it's, it's not really great. Um, however, um, it came to my attention that you needed to hear about the audits. Uh, we we have brought in to the town a total of, of pushing $500,000 over the years in grants, not to mention the aggregation savings and solar stuff. Can I just say, stop you for one second okay. and say, just repeat that, that not only are we all saving a tremendous amount of money on our electrical bills, but you have also brought in 500, nearly $500,000 in grants. That's pretty amazing. And you should be wonderfully thanked by everybody. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I hope to keep it going. And part of that is that many of the grants, almost all of them, but particularly the Green Communities grants, begin with setting a baseline and the, the grants are given on the idea that we can reduce energy use from that baseline. And to do that, we need energy audits that set a baseline so that incentives from the utilities and from green communities can kick in when we achieve 20% reduction or whatever it is. And um, so we were hoping, I mean, we're still in the process of trying to find separate funding toward audits or to find audits that will be the minimum necessary to set a baseline of energy use. But for 
each building, um, but particularly the elementary school, and, and we're hoping to work with Frontier, um, it's particularly important um, in terms of utility-based incentives to have that established. And there are a couple of ways to go about it. And I know that you've already put Matt McTeague from, from Eversource on your agenda for a couple of weeks from now. He'll be talking about the energy retrofit program. But that can coincide with our ability to get another Green Communities grant. And so that's what it's about. Um, we're, we're exploring possibilities of ways to go. Um, we got advice from Matt McTeague that he can give us names of vendors who will likely work with the town to perhaps even do them at low or discounted rates pending grant approval. Um, so it's it's the beginning of a process. There's a slight incentive uh, reason to get going at Frontier because they are about to upgrade their boilers, which will improve their energy efficiency. And if we can establish the baseline before that happens, we can more easily achieve a 20% reduction because part of that efficiency will go toward that 20% reduction. And that's, that's gonna happen pretty soon, which is why you've also been hearing about me trying to coordinate with the other energy committees of other towns. Um, so that's a slightly separate issue, but I'm open and here to ask your advice on how to best approach um, working with the school committee, uh, collaborating, not telling, <laughs> but I think ideally we could, as the four towns of the district, coordinate our grant proposals to bring into the school roughly another $500,000 worth of work. Um, and there are, there are, we know, potentials where that, that could go a long way toward just basically lowering their use of fossil fuels, but lowering their energy use altogether and increasing their resiliency by having both the capability of using gas and electricity. And whichever rate is better, they could do that. But we can do it if we can figure out how to coordinate. Well, it makes absolute sense to get the baseline done before they put in the more energy efficient boilers one way or the other. I, I mean, mean, that's, that's, up, common that's up to the district. I mean, that's their choice. Right, so they would just invite them in to do right. it. Right, so um, it's Bill Hildreth is hmm. the person there, but um, I could call it's Darius. And the school committee. Hey, Darius is aware of it. It really needs to be, this group needs to get together and, and address the school committee. It's not Darius, it's the school committee. They need to- convince. Well, Darius, we did meet, um, MA and I met with the school committee a few months ago. And Darius suggested we get together with the other energy committees mm -hmm. and come back with the proposals, which we have done, done except um, one of the towns um, suggested that we would carry more weight if we were appointed. Um, now, I know there was resistance to that that surprised me because we were appointed to an aggregation committee. We were appointed yep. to a solar committee. This grant process is grants to the town of Deerfield. But that's a district. It's not the town. I know. The whole that's, entity. That's why I think there is overlap. 
An ideal yes. team? Yes is yes. That's right. us. Yes is us. Right. Frontier is the one. Frontier the bigger... is a whole other yeah. animal that yeah. we don't have any say over or control over. It's a, right. like we, it's I, yeah. not a matter. It's not a matter of control. It's a matter of of encouraging looking serious. Yeah. Um, but I I kind of disagree because Deerfield can claim a share um, proportionate to our use of frontier, which is fifty percent. Fifty percent. In terms of green communities, that fifty percent is the towns. So but that's a again, it's a separate the, district. You just need to get approval from the school committee. Well, I totally, I, of course, we can't do anything without the school committee. Right. And but to get the school committee to pay attention to us, um, it would help to have the support of the town. And, and you know, I've been, frankly, astonished that it's so hard to give the school committee $500,000. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. it. And it, the various towns are very nervous. And I get that there's turf of what's the responsibility of the school committee and what's not. DES is no more. It is our building and so on. Correct. Frontier, as far as the grant writing and, and authority is concerned, is also Deerfield property. It isn't. It isn't. It's not our property. It's, it's, it's not our property, property, but in right. terms of them giving the grant, the money, the check is written to the town of Deerfield, not the school committee. Yeah, but, it's got would, it, it, but it would it be it would be a joint application though from all four committees. Yes, and that's where the, that's why I can say five hundred. I mean, it has to be though. It doesn't. It, it and if would it, be. If it wasn't then then the select board would have to <clears throat> approve, you know, or be part of the application process. So just so we can clarify a couple of things, yeah. you're hoping to be able to get agreement to do a deep energy audit on Frontier by what date? As soon as possible. I know as soon as possible, but I, I need to know when is the boiler well, project going to go forward? Don't, you don't that, know. I don't know that. Right. And who pays for that? Um, the There are two phases of the auditing part before a deep energy retrofit. Um, one is a free assessment to see whether they believe you could even hope to get a 20% reduction. The second is uh, the estimate we got was roughly $12,000 audit of which the um, utility ever source picks up 75%. So $3,000 to the four towns divided by their share. So it would be $1,500 to Deerfield to begin the this, this second assessment. I tried to find out for this meeting whether that preliminary assessment, the free one, could set the baseline. And I didn't get an answer yet. I suspect it can't. But for yeah. fifteen hundred bucks, I mean, we, we we have a budget of a thousand for the coming year. I'd chip that in on it um, for five hundred bucks. You guys, <laughs> but, but again, it's it. Yeah, but well, we well about aside, so let's let's, let's understand the issues here now. So, why would why would Darius or Frontier or the school committee have any objection to a free examination of the building? I don't know. I've written I've written an email to Darius, putting forth, asking him for support for this four town energy committee to be working with the school committees. Uh, haven't heard back from him, but I un understood he just closed a school for the year, and um, I'm happy to try and call him or ask Carolyn to call him, um, and and you know ask the two questions. Um, will will you? intercede with the school committee because this makes a lot of sense we're talking about saving money that we could be spending on educating students um, rather than paying for fossil fuel etc because we didn't think for didn't use forward thinking enough to to actually take advantage of people who care about this mm -hmm. um 
I think it's a no brainer too. I don't understand what the objection is. Um, and all we're asking is for people to allow, you know, people who are already in their own communities a appointed to these positions and have expertise in these areas to advise the school committee. It's it's totally mind boggling that this hasn't happened. Well, uh, as, but, as I, I, I do want to make clear that, you know, I'm open <laughs> to right. your advice on how to proceed if it does need to go through the school committee. It does. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, is there a short circuit for a free you, you visit were, to the school? You were on the, I know it was the Deerfield Elementary School Committee, but can you give us some advice how to move forward? You just get on their agenda and ask. I, we, we did. You've been to the meeting. We and, did. And Darius said, no. said, we asked Darius, who should we work with? He said the Capital Improvements Committee. We asked for a contact that we should work with. And he said, me and nobody else. And we had dead ended there. Yeah. So it, when it, you say me, you it, mean it, Darius Mattistow. It is, it's, it's, and again, it is, he can't do anything without the, the Frontier School Committee approving that. So the Frontier School Committee has to approve anything that happens. When we come up with a capital plan on the capital program, we come up mm -hmm. with an idea we have to bring it to the school committee. The school committee votes it. I would be surprised that they would say, we're not interested, other than they may be buried in a bunch of other work, yeah. you know, and the town has a lot of stuff. They have a parking lot to do. They're working on finish the track. They're working on the, the other thing. Course. They've done a lot of energy retrofit there yeah. already over the, you know, they did all the lights in the parking lot, the other lights um, over. So they're working on a lot of this stuff already. So it could be a capacity thing. And, you know, so it, is this the most important area to focus on when we have a multiple of other buildings that need addressing? Well, so I so, thought I could just jump in. I think. Hang on one sec. Oh, and then the other the other thing is, um, so again, if you just, if you get approval from them, I think they're open to it. Nobody wants to turn down money, but it's a capacity thing um, and, and just falling into those, those other issues. The other issue too is we're still paying for this for the Siemens energy mm -hmm. assessment. And yep. every year for I mean it's $21,000 a year we're constantly paying. And what has that done? Yeah. How are we, you know, I mean, that's yeah. kind of the burn that we're feeling like, okay, another energy yeah. audit. We're gonna pay for how many years? I mean, that's before my time and we're still paying twenty one thousand a year. Too. Before everybody's time. And we're like, so it it Where is do we put our limited energy to really get movement on things that are that are really going to make a difference that aren't going to just cost us more money in the long run. Like the boiler project we did there was huge help. That was a large part of that five hundred thousand at the elementary school. I'm thinking like where can we put our focus and energy that we can actually get something done on? Well, I I totally agree. I, you know if we had started this. A year ago, we could be buying those new boilers at Frontier. Mm -hmm. And what I'm hoping to do is to avoid the crunch when the energy transition goes from carrots of incentives and grants to the stick of you got to do it, which will be happening probably within 10 years. Um, and I think by planning ahead, and I'm, I'll keep trying to work. Uh, we did go to the um, school board. Mm -hmm. Darius said, come back to me. We will do that again. I have connected with the other energy committees. And the, the general idea is by connecting with them, um, they have similar questions mm -hmm. of where our authority and it isn't, to me, a question of authority, really. It's it's just, who do we talk to? Um, I agree that the Siemens was a terrible precedent. I mean, there were energy savings, but there was a lock-in that is to be avoided. Yeah. Um, that was before my time, but right. um, it it was unfortunate. And... And Frontier also has a contract with another uh, thing that handles their building management system. 
So there are there are issues. Uh, just these grants need to fit a schedule, and if if I can coordinate with the other towns, that's where the other part of the money. I mean, I can maybe come up with 160,000, but if each town did, that adds up. And we could, you know, we could make a difference there. Just for clarity, I thought that we had requested a green energy grant get involved with the boiler project, but the but the sentiment from the energy committee that they didn't want to put any, any more effort into a fossil burning system. So that's kind of where that Unless I'm you, wrong you about that, you got that backwards. Okay, it was from Bill Hildreth wanted the boilers, and I was reluctant. I didn't, I didn't really want to go with boilers because, right? I do think that they're going to have to back off fossil fuels. But we got Ben Wheel from the UMass Energy Extension Service to come, and he said, "No, David, you're wrong. You need those boilers to handle the air system." Right. You don't need them to handle the heat if you replace the heating with other things. So he thought we could get away with buying two boilers, doing some other things. They already have mini splits on the entire third floor that they're only using for air conditioning mm -hmm. in the summer. They could heat the third floor, but they don't coordinate with the central heating system a good sensor system and valve flaps to keep the air handling going could make that already electric capable. Capable, not necessarily you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And also on those 48 hours a year when it's too cold for the mini splits to be more efficient, not that they wouldn't work, but right. more efficient than the boilers, that 48 hours, you could use the boilers. So there's real potential there for really big, the mm -hmm. biggest savings we can do in town is right there. And, and it's not that, I think we can get enough money to do it without costing the school committee a penny. And I hope to be able to tell them that, but so far I'm not getting, Okay. Trevor, can you help me? Um, I've asked about this. Um, the school committees are not really easily accessible from the town website. They send you off-site to Frontier or DES, mm -hmm. and it's not easy to find them on those sites either. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can't, I was just scrolling through here trying to figure out who's the chair of the Frontier Bob Regional Bob School Bob Committee. Bob yeah. Bob, I believe. Right, but you can't find it on a website. It should be there, which is yeah. i mean i'm sure it's there but i'm saying mm -hmm. i'm pretty computer savvy and this is a deficiency in our website there should be a separate thing on our website that doesn't send you off-site that at least tells you who the people on this on these committees are sure and, contact and information. right contact information at least of the chair um, you mean on our town website? on our town yeah. website i don't see why i couldn't have it right yeah chris okay. are you hearing that um several times and each time I get told that it's available, but it takes me to another site. So it's not available. I, so we can, I have the same trouble. Man. Yeah, sure, sir. We can make a, a link for all. Right. It, it should be done people. by the end of the week. Yeah. Um, you know, because people who town residents who go onto our website expect to be able to figure out who is on the Deerfield Elementary School Committee, mm -hmm. not by going to some other site and then trying to figure out where on that site, because you look at the main frontier page, it says, back to district, for families, yeah. for students, for employees, our schools, email, mm -hmm. you know. Um, now I'm seeing school committee. So now I see Conway Grammar, Deerfield Elementary, Frontier Regional. I click on Frontier Regional. Now I find mm -hmm. Robert Holla. So I've gone through five clicks to figure out who these people are that I should be able to do from the town website. Yeah. So that's um, just a request. We and certainly do that. It doesn't look like there's any email addresses on here. So um, I don't know how to reach out to Robert Halla, but at least mm -hmm. I know who he is. We can get that more easily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Trevor, what I was going to Yes, please. I'm sorry before. to cut you off before. No, no, yeah. I, I was 
cutting you off, but you mentioned that there's a lot of projects going on. And so that's the reason that we would like to help with information gathering because it's tricky when you hear after a decision has been made to buy this or to put in that or whatever. And um, then it's also tricky when the, the proposal deadline for green communities is coming up and we don't have the information ahead of time about a long range plan about what would be best to do when. So that's what we're trying to get is, you know, the overview, um, you know, and looking ahead at different possibilities with roofs and solar and parking and, you know, all, all kinds of, you know, the kitchen facilities or whatever. If we can get the bigger picture, then we can work with the Capital Improvements Committee and let them know. I'm not even sure if in the future if being communities is going to fund any more fossil fuel projects. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, what, what we would like to serve as uh, information gathering, you know, and connect with, um, who did you mention but, before, but Ben Wheel and that kind of thing. One other aspect of it, that part of why I'm, you know, I hear you, Trevor, and I, yeah, you're undoubtedly correct. It, it, it won't fly without the school committee. It clearly has to go through them. On the other hand, um, the grants are to the town of Deerfield Bay. It is, we are appointed by you. We advise you. You have an option to put our efforts towards something else. Like, you know, we can look for other ways to use green communities money. So, right. I mean, that's part of why I thought you should be involved as well as the school committee. Yeah, we have, I mean, we have a multitude of projects going on, obviously, working, starting on the church, like, there's a lot of things that we could look at and do. And I don't know if, you know, if if the Frontier School Committee isn't clear enough to realize the benefit, then let's focus other places. But let's, I think it's worth a shot to sit before them and say, again, again, this is what we're doing. Yeah, This is why we want, we're not here to tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe there's a, um, a a view like we're not going to be able to like you can't change over the full heating system without having multiple millions of dollars, right? But maybe if you yes, can you, say yes, you can. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it's it's so the building isn't set up as a brand new building to just yeah. set up, you know, for a brand new system that can be ultra energy efficient. It's an old building, so you can take steps. But I think if you list those out and say these are the specific things that we can do with the infrastructure that you have already and we can save you this money by doing this are you interested i would be surprised i mean i know a lot of people on those boards i they're all in your line of thinking to yeah. make this energy efficient yeah. building why wouldn't they do that right well, uh, and um would would it make sense to at least i mean the town of deerfield pays a portion to the frontier so would it make sense for the select board to say that they support, you know, lowering the energy well, costs. Well, we have. Yeah. I mean, we they they. I okay. think everybody is aware like of that. It's a message to the school committee. So well, they, one of the things is out. always uh, a hold up is money. Okay, mm -hmm. so you think the second phase of this it it are, boils down to three thousand dollars, which if you did the percentages, Deerfield is like fifty one percent. So. Mm -hmm. Roughly, we're looking at three thousand dollars. Well, I mean, three thousand dollars, which of fifteen hundred would be Deerfield. Um, what we can do is, we wouldn't want to strip all your money, but if you if you were willing to come up with seven fifty, um, we can see this is the end of the year. If any of our accounts have seven hundred fifty about dollars left over, um, that we could appropriate to this and you could say to the other energy committees look you know deerfield's come up with fifteen hundred dollars sunderland you know is basically half so can sunderland and waitley can you come up with 750 each and then you go to darius and you say okay we can do the second audit with with ever sources in you know for support for Three thousand dollars. Here's the money. You know, um, we need permission from the school committee because 
nobody's budgeted for this per se. Uh, nobody's budgeted for this. So what happens is you're asking people to come up with money somewhere. Yeah. So um, if we can say that we've come up with the money to the school committee, there's no downside for the school committee. And, and then that, would, to me, would be moving forward. In the meantime, since Tim has already emailed, I could follow up with, with, with Darius to say that, you know, you've talked to us. It appears to be that we can sort this out for $3,000. You know, you, you, the energy committees are coming to you confirming that they have $3,000 to support this activity. Um, and then can can we make sure that it happens? That'd be great. In a timely manner. And and we, you know, I've been in contact with the other energy committees. The only hang up is Conway doesn't have a current active energy committee. They were the ones who suggested an appointed separate committee. It was their town administrator who suggested that. Um, however, um, I'm sure that three towns Conway, Sunderland, and Waitley can, can attend the, uh, and there are people in Conway who are interested, but right. not, not official. Well, right. People. Well, if we, if you can find the other $1,500 between the other energy yeah. committees or. I mean, the other 750, so all together the 1500. Yeah. Right. Then what. No, yeah, no, no, it's three thousand. No, so we're, yeah. you're, you're right. looking at fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. You got to raise in the other three communities somehow. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I think I think the hang up with the appointment was all these meetings are public, so you can participate. Come and participate. Mm. You know, when that's the next school committee meeting because I can't find that on this either. Uh, <laughs> they're probably off for the summer. I mean, yeah. usually they're not on until so, until late. And Late, that, uh, that's where we July or August. We just fell through a yeah. Uh, well, but you can ask Darius to schedule a school committee meeting, mm -hmm. a single issue school committee meeting that is virtual, so it's most convenient, and say because this is worth, you know, that's a few a hundred thousand. Yeah, and. Or or is Whatever. it best to focus on next year's grant application? You know, do all the groundwork for this year to well, be at it next year. That's why audits. The matter. audit is the thing that's key yeah. because if you establish a baseline, it doesn't matter what they do exactly. in the interim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if they put in a more efficient boiler, you still have the baseline, and then you're going to be. It's your clear we got to get the baseline the base. done, done, yeah. so that you can have the twenty percent energy efficiency that will allow you to have more grants. Right. You know, it occurred it, to me that since t um, Matt McTeague is coming um, July 12th, maybe we invite Bob Holla and Darius. And Bill Hildreth did listen in on a meeting before, mm -hmm. uh, maybe invite him again just to say, okay, so now we're, we're thinking about really, you know. What is the deadline for this, uh, you know? When the boilers are going in, they don't tell us that yeah. stuff, so. Because <laughs> I, I have heard, you know, that it was an, basically an emergency, which is why they didn't want us applying for grants for it. Right. Um, I have heard as much as three years to get them done because they have to order them. They have to order them. They have to and take yeah. out a wall to get right. the old ones out. They're huge. They're huge. And then, I mean, like we did They're at, like state at state locomotives. Took yeah. The large two. And put in three small ones, so and they can, can be stacked and, and right. a lot more could, efficient. They will well, be a lot more efficient. Yeah, it's a good thing. I mean, I'm in favor. It's a good thing. It's too bad we didn't start last year and right and well, pay for it. But, yeah, but that doesn't mean so, we can't get it done. But the audits. When when do the audits before cease, that? When do the audits cease to be available to us? Um, well, they're they're always going to be available in the next. 10 years, you know, yeah. uh, but as soon as the boilers are in, we can't claim that the baseline. Right, is, but you just said it's going to be three years or well, possibly three years. Well, not at all. I could don't find out. know that. Yeah. Bill, Bill should know that schedule. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, obviously, procuring stuff over the last couple of years has been hard, so. Yeah. Why don't, um, uh, Lori, why don't you tell Chris, email Chris, Nolan, um, what uh, an invitation to Bill Hildreth, 
Darius and Bob Halla. Mm -hmm. Because if Bob is willing to come, we don't have to post a meeting for the school committee. Um, and, and then he may be, because of the information that we're going to get on the 12th, um, that we can come up with a solution of either having a meeting or time, time frame or whatever for this audit. Because it's, you said it was a two-phase audit to begin with. So let's get the first phase going that's free and then get the process sorted out for the second phase, which would confirm our money. So if you can come up with a game plan for the money um, between now and our July 12th meeting, mm -hmm. we can get an invitation out. Um, I mean, I'll talk to Chris and Casey to see if we can come up with our money. You know, our you if you come up if you're willing to vote your 750 of your thousand for and then we'll try to find some either money left over from this fiscal year or next fiscal year because we have a couple days either side right now. Um, I'll talk to Brenda. We'll figure that out. Trevor and Tim, are you okay with that? Fine. I was just going to ask. This thousand dollars is that something you get every year? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's our budget. <laughs> yeah, so you get a budget, and you've spent your budget for last for what you got for this We've year. You've encumbered it. Yeah. You've encumbered yeah. it on on trees, but okay. Yeah. Um, you haven't spent it though. And we haven't actually spent it. So you got a thousand for this year, and you got a thousand for next year. Yeah. Suddenly, you got fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah. Two, no, actually, you got two thousand. I would be. Fine with giving up the trees. Um, one of our members did a lot of work on that. But no, I'm just saying, you know, needs yeah. must. I mean, we can them, but... if we can find the 750. <laughs> if we can find the 750, fine. I have no objection to we have extra yeah. money somewhere. Yeah. Let's just get. Yeah, we get just need. The, I think your idea about getting Robert Hanna, yeah, Bill Hildreth, and and um, and um, Darius here, and get so we can all talk together and they say, look, let's just find a path forward. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, not that conceivably, if in fact it's a three-year project to put in the gas boilers, that could be part of the grant. Yeah. We could pay for that, or part of it anyway. Right. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Oh, you mean each each year try to get a grant or? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's 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 plan on getting together on the twelfth. Any dollars that we can save on the school budget, uh, for. Capital is money that we can spend on kids instead. So right. I'm, or parking I'm, lots. Or parking lots or whatever. And so, it's ongoing savings. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That sounds really good. Sorry, I got a little frustrated there, folks. But uh, it is these websites, it is they make me crazy. It is, I just, it is really I frustrating. All of it. I just get stuck in the... In in the legal requirements, oh, well, Trevor's fault. Whatever I know, yeah. I'll take the blame. I don't mind. <laughs> no, it's it's just oh. it's it's frustrating because um, the frontier district is totally. I mean, no one owns it. No, right? it's separate, hmm. and so you can't really I have any influence. So. Right? Yes, we do, but we, we don't, don't get to have a say unless we're right. on that school committee. Yeah. Right. So, um, but I, I think we have a way forward um, and I'm 100% I'm supportive of starting the first process, which is free. And, and we do need the baseline um, right now because otherwise you can't do the, save that 20%, which will make us eligible for more money. We, did we do a audit on that, on the DES building before we paid for the boilers? Yeah. Okay. Was it a two-part audit, or did we just do no, a, no. different? No, that's things? actually a separate program, but it, it happens it to do great. what green communities needs as well. The, the advantage of the deep energy retrofit audit is that process has a utility incentive of 20, uh, of a dollar per square foot when you reach 20%. And at 50%, you get 50 cents per square foot. And at 20%, you get a dollar per square foot. So that's added to whatever you can. And I, I would suspect that the difference between these energy audits and the Siemens project is that the Siemens project was dedicated to doing Siemens solutions. Oh, and no, that's never a good idea awful. to have awful. somebody audit and then tell you what they're going to, their products they're going to put in your building. Yeah, that's, that's a recipe for getting 
raked over the coals. It was, and yeah. so it was. It yeah. was. <laughs> And so yeah, it is. It is. I think <laughs> yeah. that may be the root of some of the. Yeah, and I resistance. think you have to have that um, little, you know, hair trigger alert signal when we're working with um, Eversource. But from my understanding, and, and I can get you the flyer on their website, um, is that they have many vendors. Yeah. So once they do the audit and they see some things that could be done, they have many vendors that they work with. That and he and Matt told me that the vendors will help with finding the incentives from the Inflation Reduction Act and from um, Mass Save um, to work with the town. So it does it doesn't sound like the same kind of thing at all. Right. So, Probably just so much different. Just yeah. just to summarize here, Lori, you're gonna let Chris know um, who to invite. And you Chris, all... you've been hearing us, yes, Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know what she's yes. gonna do. Yes. So you know what you're gonna do. Still yep. like... I will keep my eyes peeled. And then David and Lori, you both are going to contact the other three towns to come up with the 750. And, yeah. and, and I think in some, some of this too, the hesitation to a lot of this is staff time yeah. and our sure. accountants time of managing all yeah. these stuff. And they're ready to like pull their hair out on a lot of it. Yeah. It gets super frustrating because they're so busy yeah. with so many other things. And then on top of it, there's this grant with all this so it's like if we can find somebody to offload the work to right like the grant that. administrator that we're trying yeah, to hire, bingo. yes you know which yes. we could be posting on uh, Darius asked the other day do we have anybody hired yet because I'm trying for for um handicap uh playground equipment and he needs somebody to help with that grant so it's like and one we have in, in all our grants I think had assistance from FERCOG on um you know they apply for their own municipal um, te technical assistance grants, yeah. and they get them, and they yeah. have helped us yes. considerably. Yes, they're, they're great, great organizations. Well, we that. seem to have a game plan. I'm, I don't know if we yeah. should probably move on to Yeah. Yep. Yes. Thank I'm you only, for I'm lingering because I heard there's very lot uh, things on the... Oh, uh... We have a Larry Lot. Well, we could do the update. Chris, do you want to? Is there anything to update on the Larry Lot? Sure. Um, yeah, I can look can to what I have for that. So um, we do have some updates on the Leary Lot this week. We've gotten some more um, specific financial figures figured out uh, throughout that process. And I put together a sheet explaining those hold on let me just scroll to yeah. where that is in this packet so i i color coded it really basic green is money that we have obtained or could potentially obtain um and red is costs so in regard to the leary lot and for the record the document i'm referring to is the assistant town administrator report um so uh the leary lot specifically EV charging. Um, I'm continuing to work with Rivermore and Berkshire Design. I've had meetings with both of them in the past couple of days. Um, still very satisfied with the work that we're getting from both of those groups. Um, we received a quote from Universal Electric for the infrastructure that would need to be installed um, in order to have EV charging happen at the site. Um, for the Deerfield Town Hall, it's Fairly modest at $33,220, and you'll see below that the Elyria lot figure is kind of astounding by comparison. It's $707,830. Now, that's so obviously a lot of money. Can you, can you just say that again, Chris? $707,830 was the quote that we got from Universal Electric for Leary lot EV chargers. So what's helpful there, that includes the level three rapid charging stations. And we have a multi-million dollar grant application in with the US Department of Transportation that we should know the answer to by this summer. Um, if we obtain that grant, that would not be a problem. Um, essentially what this has shown us is if we do not obtain that grant, uh, level three is not going to be feasible within the near future. Um, it could be at some point far down the road um, but the 
level three charging is really contingent on being able to get that federal grant that we have the application waiting on right now. Um, the good news in terms of money that we have received so far, we've received two grants, both in the amount of $19,130 uh, from the Mass EVIP, the Electric Vehicle Incentive Program. Uh, one of those is for putting in uh, two level two chargers with four ports um, at the Leary lot, and the other one is for the town hall parking lot. Um, we've also been awarded, uh, pre-awarded, I should say, the money from the Eversource EV Make Ready program. Um, and again, with the Leary lot one, the $536,801.45 um, is also going to be reliant on whether or not we get that federal grant because we won't be needing to use that money if we don't have the remaining federal funding to back it up. Um, so in terms of timeline, uh, we're anticipating ordering the level two EV charging equipment in August. Um, by that point, we should be far enough along in the design work um, that we could get those ordered and they should ship within a few months. Um, hopefully by the by the fall would be looking to install those um, and the remaining funds for the level three would be again contingent upon approval of the federal grant application. Um, the other Leary lot update that I wanted to give you all is that Rivermore Energy, um, they've been doing terrific work for us so far, um, and all of it has actually been uh, pro bono. So they've put forth a statement of work to continue to do a lot of the work that they've done so far and also serve in an official role as the town's project management. Um, and that would be a total of $21,000. Um, and that's been received by us. Um, it's I, I, I would hope to get the board's thoughts on that, but I, I just would say that I've been very pleased with the work Rivermore has helped us accomplish so far. Um, they helped us get the $38,000 combined through the state EVIP program. Um, and in terms of the Eversource Make Ready, that's over a half a million dollars that they've helped us secure um, contingent upon federal funding as well. So um, I feel that 21,000 is a very fair price for the scope that's contained within the statement. And it's, it's below what is actual market rate for the services they're providing. Um, so I, I hope the board will take that into consideration. And that is all I have in the Leary lot for right now. So can I ask a couple of questions and then and maybe Trevor sure. as well. Um, mm -hmm. Frank came, brought to my attention that the existing chargers that we have over near um, Cheslick's market, there's um, this 200 a month why don't you explain what these fees are? Sure. Distribution. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of questions. And Can I'm you speak gonna... into the mic? Okay. So um, I'm not sure that you know, Chris, because this was before you were um, working with us, um, that I, I did some of the research in order to get the charging station that we have now at the Leary lot. Um, so one thing that I wonder is, um, about the new make ready infrastructure that we got we got that to get the present charging station the meter that they put there I believe can support up to 10 charging stations so we don't need new infrastructure unless we really don't like the location um, but my 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 concern and um, Carolyn and Trevor will witness that I was very um, energetic about you know, using the money from Eversource and using the Green Communities Grant and putting this in. And since then, I've learned and talked to a lot of other towns that the equipment and the infrastructure uh, are are just like, um, you know, a tease. It's candy because to get that, once you get that, then you have to pay the cost of the electricity. And it's not just the cost for what the car gets, it's the demand charges. And I think we've talked a little bit about this, but if a car is plugged in, and I'm not an expert on this, but we did get the bills from the DPW and we've been looking through them. If the car is plugged in and draws more than two kilowatts of, uh, of um, electricity for any amount of time, I think, if they d draw more than that, and the um, level two chargers can draw up to seven kilowatts, you get a demand charge in addition to electricity cost of $20, 10 for distribution and 10 for transmission. So we might, I, and I haven't gotten to see the charge point dashboard. So I don't know what, how many people we've served, but I know that like a monthly bill is 
between, you know, 200 and 100, 200 dollars, just the demand charge alone. So we can't, our, our charging station right now is one of the most expensive in the area. I didn't get to do a lot of comparison, but I talked to Northfield town administrator yesterday. They are nowhere near making, um, breaking even, um, and they only charge 30 cents a kilowatt hour. We've gotten some complaints for the cost of ours, but I don't know how, one last thing, Trevor, is that if we were to allow, um, install level one chargers, which can draw 50 kilowatts, not seven, but 50, I, you know, I would hate to see what the demand charges are. And I know that DPW is looking, D DPU is looking at this. I just don't know where they are in the process and how soon I, I it's going to get resolved. I think we should about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and we've talked to, we've talked to um, Natalie and Joe, I've written letters to them and there is so, something uh, rate change on the docket. And I, they told us that when we, when we installed this, um, the man I was working with at Eversource told us that there was something being looked into for the future, but I don't know when the change will happen and how much it will benefit us. So we were warned about this when, when this went in. I talked to the woman in Greenfield who um, ran theirs and said, she's warned us like, this is not, you're not gonna, you're gonna cost you money to put mm -hmm. these things in. It's, we have not made it any or even close to broke even on that thing if you put a charger in you need to put it on a line that already has multiple other things that are already drawn right. so you're not paying for those right. already we didn't do that here uh i'm sure we're not then that i'm sure that's why eversource wants to put it on a specific line where it's not nothing else is on it mm -hmm. over you on the that, other side yeah. it's yeah. how they make the money oh and yeah Mm -hmm. I just, I the, the, we need to come up with $151,000 if we don't get the other thing just to put in these chargers and it. it um, but that's not the cost. I mean, we, once we right. get, they give it to us, then we own it and we are paying. If one person uses it for the month, we still get a huge bill. So it, it uh, just doesn't make sense. I'm they, not sure why we go in. affordable to charge cars yet. Yeah. I just have not. The just just for if case anybody's watching, I spent the afternoon looking this stuff up. <laughs> Good. Yes. The idea of a demand charge was for big factories to, to try to smooth out their energy demand so that they would get basically a penalty on the peak thing when they're turning on their big electric motors or whatever, if they could do it in steps, it would be yep. less of a peak. So the the idea there is that they're using a ton of energy already they're using kill you get basically two kinds of charge from the utility there's the rate at which you pay for kilowatt hours mm -hmm. like what aggregation was all yeah. about the second charge once you're over two kilowatts is set by the maximum amount you use and it gets charged for the whole month and it's it's ten dollars times that amount so take two kilowatts you get twenty dollars but Twice. but if you're doing a hundred kilowatts which is not kilowatt hours but the the mm -hmm. rate it's coming in right at a hundred kilowatt hours times ten it'd be you know a thousand bucks so um that's where it doesn't make sense for a car charger because you don't, in a factory, if you're using a ton of electricity all the time and you've got a lot of kilowatt hours, level it out. The, the ratio of your rates is smaller. Yep. If you charge one car and don't get any other income from that charging and it goes over two kilowatts you're paying the 20 or 40 bucks right. uh, okay well so basically we're looking at what are the hidden costs of having these things and uh, you know yeah i i think I, it's yeah. not worth putting them in nope. if if, we don't if you can on. go to treehouse and get free electric I, yeah. I think um i mean the lesson i've learned is if somebody wants to give you something for free <laughs> <laughs> you gotta ask why. Yeah. So the energy company has a lot to, you know, a lot to um, gain from this. 
I don't know how far we are into the process, but I, I did Where's just write to Bob Dean, um, that regional energy coordinator at FERCOG, to see if we can have a, a meeting, you know, for all the towns to, to exchange information and get somebody from the DPU maybe to address this and really push a change. But right now, I I am not in favor of moving forward with it. Crazy. If we are getting... Um, you know, credits from our solar projects in town, I would rather see that dedicated to more heat pumps and more okay. solar on rooftops well, than subsidizing somebody's charging. Or at least trying to get chargers that go behind the meter of some big companies. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah, maybe yeah. at the DPW, it might make sense. Yeah, we're or, drawing a lot of energy. Yeah. yeah I, something's, and, and this is what she talked about originally, and she, there is legislation trying to kind of yeah. fix this issue, but... I mean, the federal government, if they, if the whole industry, if they want people off of cars, they have to fund this a different way because there's no way people are going to, towns can afford to subsidize um, that use. It just, no. it's just yeah. too expensive. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, okay, we have a wicked long agenda still. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you are all set for uh, July 12th. Chris will let you know uh, where you fit in on the agenda. Okay. So, and everybody's, in, whether they will come or not and um, talk to people to try to get people, more people here to discuss energy is cool. Okay. And I, I'll talk to you more, Chris, about um, the EV charging app. Sure. How much, how many um, customers we've had and how much income we've actually gotten compared to what we've spent on it. Mm -hmm. I just want to make some clarity moving forward. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Yeah, I look forward to discussing that with you. Thank you. Thank you for your work, both of you. I, we really do appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Can I add a couple of things? Yeah. Oh, sure. yes. Sure. Sure. So um, I, I, I do want to say we are fairly well along in the process of planning for EV charging um, at the Leary lot. So it's not something at all that I'm, I'm comfortable backing away from or scrapping plans. I, I think there is room to reevaluate for sure. Um, but yeah. the grant application for the multi-million dollar federal EV charging grant um, has been submitted. Um, and if, if we do get it, we are, I imagine, going to want to use it. Um, but that, that there would be room to reconsider there, it sounds like. Um, in terms of the money that has been received so far by the state, um, I think it would be worth kind of looking back at where we stand with Eversource in terms of um, is there a way that we can move forward with putting them on the same uh, unit as the existing EV charger um, to avoid creating two different uh, stations that are going to drive up demand charges even more. Um, and that's something that I would be more than happy to do some research on. but. I, I do just want to make sure that we're we're not going to be kind of on a whim scrapping hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of planning that we've done so far. I'm not in favor of moving forward if it's this kind of cost. It just has to be affordable. I mean, we have to make sure that it's paid for by people charging or grants from the government. It's not up to the residents of town to charge everybody's car. So there's no way we can afford that. Um, the, the numbers that I see now, unless there's some other thing that I'm missing, but it, it just seems like it's wholly way too much money. And we should, we should definitely pause on this until we get clarity on, is that grant coming through? And if it is not coming through, then yeah, we have to just see how much more it would cost to put a few more things on that demand thing. And is there a way to change that demand? I, I mean, we just can't continue to subsidize that. Yeah. Right. Yes. No, I, I do fully agree. Um, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say the other the other question I would have is if we move forward on the grant and we install the the chargers and then we shut them off, you know, do, does that mean we've just got seven, you know, one hundred and fifty or one point five million dollars worth of equipment in the ground and we don't owe any money on to anybody, or is there a cost to not doing it? I mean, say we run it for a year and we decide this just doesn't make any sense, we're going to shut it off. You know, until it's right. right until they solve the dpu problem and you know look if if the town is part of the aggregation and we're buying kilowatt hours for 14 cents 
how come we can't get 14 cents delivered at that place? Right. I mean, right. And there's something, yeah, there's something wholly mysterious about this whole thing. Like it doesn't seem weird at all. It feels like they make it muddy so that nobody understands it. And then you get stuck with a couple of machines at the town paying a boatload of money for it. Right. But I agree. Like if the federal money comes through and it makes it affordable and we know what the demand charge is going to be and we are, are fee to charge cars, like they're going to come and use it because it's reasonable with everybody else. I'm all for like moving us forward in that, in yeah. that ecological, you know, journey, but not at the cost of the and before I would ago. I would before I would sign a, a the twenty one thousand dollar contract with Rudmore, I'd want them to come in and answer these questions. Yeah, for sure. They need sure. To and I'm I'm happy to reach out to John Tortolot and see if he can come speak at the next meeting, possibly and uh, as if we don't have enough things on the agenda, I know. Um but no, I th I think he would be amendable to that if that's okay with, with all of you. Um in all seriousness. When you said that the federal grant um, it's coming out in the summer. Do you have, uh, is it like July or are you talking about the end of August or something? I think August is the estimate I've heard. Um, I, I don't know when in August, um, okay. but I think that is very much going to be a deciding factor in how this project moves forward. Um, okay, so um, we have a Leary Lot meeting on the 10th of July, a follow-up meeting. And that apparently is um, the planning board meeting that night. Yeah. So there, yeah, there there happens to be both a planning board and a finance committee meeting that night. So I was wondering if the board might be amendable to holding that a different night that week. Yeah, we should. Um, so I'm I'm proposing that is are both of you in town for the 17th? I, I don't know. I know I've got to go look at some. Uh, the 17th stuff. or the 24th doesn't matter. You can just set it, and I'll be here if not. Yeah, I'm, I should be around colleges. either day. Okay. That's Mondays, right? Right. We were looking at Monday. It seemed like Monday was a, a more uh, amenable date to people. Right. To but Can I express a preference for the 17th between those two? Sure. 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 Yep. Okay. That's fine. So, um, Chris, could you notify, could you make sure that this gets on the calendar as a select board meeting? For yes. I will and do that email all the people that signed in mm -hmm. um, and then we'll advertise that the meeting on the 10th because of conflict with the finance committee and the planning board we are moving to july 17th okay? excellent yes that sounds great all right so um just make sure that that happens Okay, so that we we're done the Larry Lot update. Is there anything else you wanted to say offhand um, about Larry Lot? I think that's okay. I just wanted to make sure the meeting yep. was addressed. All right. Sure. Then we'll go back to um, Trevor. Do you want to walk us through the wastewater treatment plant phase one upgrade sure. order change order? Yep. So we've got a um, change order for some work at the plant. Um, let me just get to it here. So the, this is change order um, 11. Um, make sure I got that right. Yeah, change order 11. Um, it's for an increase of $21,264.26. Um, and this is to a couple of things that are changing while we're finishing up um, after kind of reviewing everything and having Eric look over you know, as everything's kind of coming together and finishing up, they'd like to have some electrical outlets out by the clarifier if they need to plug in some stuff out mm -hmm. right out there. So this is just the first part of it. It was 1297 to put in the electrical conduit and, um, and outlets out by the clarifier. Um, the second part of the change order um, was aeration tank changes. Um, so this was... Um, Piping, yeah, was was piping and and um, so there's a bib piping, uh, a plumbing going to the um, for a bib outside the house, uh, outside the um, clare, uh, not the clarifier. What do you call that? The plant water hydrant. Yes, and also the um, screener. Headworks. The headworks. Yeah, head. Thank you, headworks. I'm drawing a blank here today. The headworks, and then also um, some stuff out by the clarifiers too. But, 
want to wash wash down stuff, you can see it on the map. The different okay, things. Okay, so that was thirteen thousand three hundred yep. fifty eight dollars. And okay. then there was a credit of one thousand nine hundred forty five seventy, which was some changing from stormwater uh, changes with capping a pipe at the end okay. uh, of the plant. And then there was a five hundred and thirty nine dollars and twenty eight cents, which was just for the illuminated keypad for when they come in to open up so they can see. It was right. cheaper to do that than to, like put a light out there. Okay. Um, so that worked out well and all the stuff is there. And then there was the um changes five hundred and forty four dollars and ninety five cents. We we didn't put a pad down for the AC units. They put them up on the wall, so they just needed brackets and stuff to do that for the AC units. Um okay. relocating the HVAC. Um so that's the, better. That's better to have it off. Yeah, the up ground. off the ground. Yep. yep, for sure. Okay, so that makes sense. And then, um, and then the five thousand seventy-four dollars and forty-nine cents were site modifications for the the finishing of the sloping and stuff. And we added riprap along the slope, so they don't have to mow in a steep spot. They added riprap along that area um, oh, well, along the back. That makes sense as well. Yep, and then we added three inches of asphalt walkway uh, will be replaced with loam and seed. And then I think that is it. Oh, uh, okay, well, no, no. Safety railing. Yep. yep. So the uh, the chlorine tanks, the railing wasn't really um, up to code for OSHA. So they, they um, added um, upgrading the, the pipes there, which was $2,395 and 49 cents. Those seem to be um, reasonable. Safety stuff. Yeah. Yep. All reasonable. Okay. Yep. Good to tell you, right? I decided that was. I know. I know. Follow with that, right? I can't. I can't follow crap. And then you can't. And then you can't. Um, you can't like separate anything, right? Like, uh, I've got five piles here because I can't figure out <laughs> what those what, are what, what? where one thing starts and the other. I know it's saving know. paper, but just a, a request, maybe. Well, each item be on one thing. Yeah, because when it prints out, it like prints everything all together. So if you want to like scrap a page, you can't because it's stuck to another page. That you need it to does. Go. Yeah, I can I can work on making that not an issue with the future packets. It does waste paper. I get it, but um, it's but not it really waste. wasting our time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> all right. So I'll accept right. a motion to um, approve the change orders and, and allow me to sign. It's total. Yes, it is. It, the oh. total is twenty one thousand two hundred sixty four dollars and twenty nine cents, right on that front. Oh, that's a, just one right? page. Yep. Yeah, yeah, right here. Okay, twenty one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to uh, approve the change order eleven of twenty one thousand two hundred sixty four dollars and twenty nine cents. And I'll second that. Okay. okay. Any further discussion? No. Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Shores, aye. Thank you. Okay. There's probably something in that pile on the other side. Oh, yeah. you got it right there. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Great. Part of the reason I'm irritable tonight is because there's no air conditioning in this place. Yeah. And it's humid. Why? Did we because we're waiting for somebody to come fix our mini splits instead of paying the bill ourselves. I, I, they don't yep, work. They don't work, Trevor. I don't, I don't know. know. They've been broken. Okay. Um, all right. Next item is sewer abatements. Trevor, you're going to um, look at these. Yes. Oh, good. Um, Trevor, you're going to look at the sewer abatements and give yes. us a recommendation for the 12th. Okay. Thank you. Um, we did treehouse already. So we just need to uh, review and approve the thank you letter to Mass DOT, District 2. Um, did everyone have a chance to look at that? Say that again. Sorry. This is for review and approval of the thank you letter to Mass oh, DOT, yes. District 2 for the sidewalk. Oh, yeah, I, I, think I, I think I remember that letter. Yeah, it's here somewhere. <laughs> um, but Yes, thank you for writing that. I just thought, hey, we ought to thank her. Yep, no, that was great. So I... Uh, Make a motion to approve the letter to uh, thank the district two for the sidewalk repair before the parade. Okay. And I'll second it. Uh, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you. The, it was lovely to have yeah. sidewalk repairs done great. before our 350th. Um, 
a letter of support for congressional legislation for the Deerfield River Wild and Scenic designation. This is to um, the Energy and Natural Resource Committee. Did this go out already? Did you stamp this already and went out already, right? Right. It did. This is just a retroactive approval of it. This is Sounds a, good. This is a yes. We already supported we it. Did. We voted to support it. We did. Yeah. And um, it needed for the public hearing on June twenty first. So, mm -hmm. I authorized Chris to send the letter, and then hopefully we'll approve the vote. Yeah. By our meeting. motion to approve the the this, uh, letter of support for the Deerfield River Wild and Scenic designation for the Congress. Second. Um, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Our, our stamps were used on this, yep. so we're all yep. set. Um, next item on the agenda is, um, well, we did, um, we, well, we have annual appointments. We, did, we didn't do the review of the abatements, but I don't. You know, no, we're no Trevor's going to. You're going to look at I'll, I'll them, get right? something together for us for next week. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, we're set. So let me get my. How we get, what do we have? We, appointments? And then yeah. what else was there? Oh, the South County Senior Center Age Friendly thing. I thought yeah, we did um, that already multiple times. But I, so I the, uh, sorry, if I, if I may, the um, Memorandum of Understanding for the yeah. uh, Age Friendly Planning, this is just for the new fiscal year. It just needs to oh, be okay. renewed, basically. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That would, I, this was driving me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it like, seemed like it kept this. coming up. Okay. Right. Giving people a lot of deja vu. <laughs> do you want to just do that quick or do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's so do make that a motion to uh, uh, sign the memorandum of understanding between South County Senior Center and Franklin Regional Council of Government for age friendly planning. Second. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, Thank wait you. a second. So you're gonna I mean, we're not gonna do the sewer abatements. You're gonna give us a recommendation. Yep. So that's gonna be held yep. for next next meeting, Chris. Um you know what? We need to sign we'll there's the memorandum of understanding for Franklin solid waste. Yeah, no, wait, we're gonna let's let's catch up on our signing, okay? Oh we have the we have the treehouse brewing that oh. we voted. Yeah, yeah. Thank and you. we did not sign. We did not sign yet. Right. I, I don't want us to leave without getting no. all our signatures on this. Yep. Um, and this is the letter to DOT that we just voted. It's just one slide, right? Yeah. Okay. And okay. Just don't want to miss all this stuff. Okay, so this is a library fine. All right, so that's done. I signed warrants this week as well, and I believe there's another warrant to sign because it's a double week warrant. Right. Yeah. I know uh, Brenda's coming back tomorrow. I think she tomorrow be she'll be back. Okay. Um. So. Uh. So that's done. Okay. There's Where something is the, uh, uh, on that behind me. Is that, is that, is that all treehouse? No, it's all treehouse, okay. I think. Looking for the, um, yep. that, and then. So that's the treehouse thing. The yeah. Treehouse thing. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The MOU. All right. Um, so Where's we the, have. The MOU for the um, sludge home. Yeah, we like got that. Let's, let's do the yeah. appointments. Oh. Um, so we have uh, annual appointments for the Community Preservation Committee. Um, Ooh. You want to start with the beginning? Yeah, we're, do I, I should probably. Yeah, it starts with the ad hoc human rights. But we're going to put that on hold. hold. Because the building commissioner. Um, you know what, I'm missing that page. So let me use this one. Yeah. So okay. yeah, the ones that are highlighted in pink are the ones that are slated for reappointment tonight. Okay, so um, we're going to do the ADA coordinator, uh, Casey Warren. We're going to do the building commissioner, Bob Walden, with Dick Kalaszewski being the local inspector. 
Um, we're going to be doing Denise Mason um, as Capital Improvement Committee um, member from the Planning Board recommendation. Um, okay, now I have this one. Um, that we're doing Lily Dwight, Richard Ben Benson, and Sean Libby for the Community Preservation Committee. Um, we're doing Benjamin Byrne for the Conservation Commission. We're doing Laura Panetti and Denise Schwartz and Emily Gaylord for the Cultural Council. I'm going to vote. Let's see. Yeah, we're just going to vote all together. And, uh, oh, what? No. We're going to do them individually. Don't we? Uh, oh. Well, I mean, there's some that I'm not voting on, so. Oh, okay. Then we'll go back. Okay. Um, ADA coordinator. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Governor McDaniel, aye. Okay. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, building commissioner, Bob Walden. Richard Kalaszewski, local inspector. I'll, I'll, I'll vote for Bob Walden, but not Dick Kalaszewski. Okay. Bob was supposed to get a replacement for the last two years, and he has not yet. Okay. Um, I will vote yes. Um, just to some having discussion. Um, what happens when we don't have somebody? Well, we've been we've been asking Bob to get a replacement for because he is a backup for other towns, Chester or wherever. And we've been asking to get a backup for Deerfield uh, for a long time because Dick retired from this a long time ago. And now, and every time it comes to appointment, we're trying to add Dick back in again. Yeah. And I'm saying enough, he, you know, he's retired. We, I've asked Bob over and over and over again. Dick is wonderful and he gives a ton of advice and he has a ton of history and knowledge, but he's retired, you know, and we keep appointing him again. And it's it's time that we move on. And Bob needs to find a replacement. That's my an alternate. Sense. An alternate, right? Really? Just somebody to be there in case he goes on vacation or whatever. Right. Well, it's a pretty simple task. Yeah, I mean, I I get your point, Trevor. So I think I'm going to agree with you. And okay, so we'll say Bob has to do that. Okay, Denise Mason to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Sorry, can, can I just interrupt one second? Yes. I, I don't know if, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you actually took a vote to appoint Bob. We did not yet. Oh, oh okay. Sorry, I thought you, you just said that you just, you voted yes. I, I do vote. I, I second Bob Walden at yes. Okay. Okay, so I'll make a motion to appoint Bob Walden for uh, the building commissioner annual of reappointment. And you're I'll second, second that. Yes. All right. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness. Thanks, okay. Chris. <laughs> okay. Um, Community Preservation Committee. We have Lily Dwight, Richard Ben Benson, and Sean Libby. You have a second? Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, <laughs> Conservation Commission, Ben Byrne. Uh, second, Ben Byrne. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn Daniel, Daniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Cultural Council, Laura Panani, Denise Schwartz, and Emily Gaylord. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, Dedic, we have John Pachork, Senior, Acting Chair, Frank Morrill, and Chris Harris. Second. All those, and, and we found it, and John definitely wants to serve again still. Okay, yeah. Great. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Okay. Um, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Rep, M.A. Sweetlin. Second. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Carolyn S. aye. Um, Franklin County Transit Authority Select Board Designee. Uh, Bob Decker or Robert Decker the third. Second. All those in favor? Is that the Robert that I think it is? Yes. Um, uh, Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. 
Yes, it's Bob Decker, our senior. I yeah. mean, the one that we normally see. Yeah. yeah. Um, Franklin County government's rep, Trevor, Trevor McDaniel, and Casey Warren as alternate. I'm happy to continue to serve unless anybody else would like to take over and serve. That's fine. You're also president right now, right? I, so or far, chair. Yeah, I don't, yeah, chair. But, uh, well, but I'm at, you know, anybody else. Okay. <laughs> We're fine. Cut that off. So, yeah. Trying to sure you're stuff. not getting out of it that easy, Trevor. I guess not, but uh, <laughs> happy to step aside if somebody wants it. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Joe McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, FERCOG Electricity Aggregation Project, David Gilbert Keith. Second. And all those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Hazardous Waste Coordinator, Lynn Rose. Second. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Historic Commission. Uh, Benita Collin, Con Conlin, and John Nove, Chair. Second. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn S. I. And uh, personnel, Raloon Bellick, um, David Sharp. Second. And, oh, Casey Warren, representative, our representative to mm -hmm. the planning board, I mean, to the personnel board. Um, second. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, Register of Voters, Joanne Carney. What about, we don't deal with the auxiliary police? She, um, I don't have the auxiliary police. She's interested in doing it? I don't know. Did you, Chris, did you reach out Anybody? to Joanne Carney? I did not. I'm not sure who she is, in all honesty. My neighbor, but I didn't. I was thinking she was stepping down from some of that stuff. But if she is willing to serve, great. I just didn't know if anyone had confirmed the piece. I don't so know. we can vote her in, and then she where, can where step down if she didn't want to, for sure. Right underneath um, personnel board. Oh, I don't have that one. Mind. Carolyn, sorry if you're looking at an outdated copy. I, I did send an updated one this afternoon. Um, the only addition is there are four auxiliary police officers that have been included that were initially left off by accident. Oh, okay. Um, okay, let's 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 go back from the register of voters to auxiliary police. We have an, a new administrative assistant, Casey Jerome, uh, Cassie Jerome, uh, Kevin Scarborough, Phil Snow at Eagle Brook, and Chris McDougall at DA. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, register of, oh, register of voters. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, Joanne Carney, Cassie Sanderall, and Virginia Kolakowski. Second. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, Town Memorial Forest Committee, Trevor McDaniel, Carolyn Shores Ness, and Tim Hilchi. I feel like I'm falling down on the job on that appointment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, you know we'll find the like, dark forest. He's passing the sycamores and wanting to trim all the bittersweet off of them over by Melnick. So yeah. Uh, well, I'm second. Guy. My We're trying to sort out where that dark forest is, too. Yeah. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilti, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, Laura Ponetti. Um, Pontani. Pontani, sorry. Um, as as full t as full um, board member, rather than alternate. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, so uh, full member? Yes. We're going to have one, two, three, four, five. We'll still have five. We'll still have one vacancy still. For full member? Yeah. Um, I'm going to abstain. Okay. And I will vote yes. All right. So we're all set for right now. Um, we have, uh, do we, Chris, do we have the formal request for Morgan Ferret for, um, our, Paramedic, it it should have come true, or 
I don't see the letter here in my packet. Um, I don't believe I saw it, but let me double check. Okay. Uh, Tim and I were at the meeting, so we or know. The non meeting. Or the non meeting. So we know that Morgan Farrick was um, recommended to the BOO. The BOO did, in fact, uh, recommend to the select board Morgan Farrick. So I would make a recommendation to hire for a full time paramedic. And I, I think. I'm not sure of the start date. Do you remember the start date, Tim? I believe it was July 1. Or something like that, wasn't it? Let's, let's make it July 1. Um, if that is not correct, we will have to um, revote it. But effective July 1st, uh, she will be taking a, be a full-time paramedic with the South County EMS service. Do you want to second that? Um, second. Um, is there any more discussion on that? I'm going to say that I would have preferred that this go through a real process. It didn't seem to go through a process. There were a lot of things that didn't happen in the way they should have happened, um, including the job posting. Um, so I think we got a limited pool. Um, Eric Morgan seems to be well qualified and has good history. Yeah. Um, I also would have probably left it to the new director to decide, but I just wanted to express those caveats. Um, I have to say, I looked at her resume when we finally got the resume and um, she's been with us. And mm -hmm. so it it's probably good, would have been our choice. So, but it wasn't, fault, the process wasn't followed correctly. But anyway, I vote yes. Tim Hilchi, aye. Jeremy Daniel, aye. And I had voted yes. So uh, unanimous on that. Uh, we don't have, we were supposed to work on the job description to forward to the personnel committee last night, but we had no quorum. Uh, Tim and I were there, uh, which I don't, I'm a non-voting member and um, Gary Stone from Waitley. So we had no quorum and were unable to complete the job description review. So we're hoping to get that done on Friday. Um, mail, um, oh, we got to do the sludge. Yes. That was an item not in, on. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, yep. you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, okay. Is, is the board all set with appointments? Yes. We're all set. Okay. Yeah. So only those people we took action on. I hope you were keeping track. Yes. Yep. 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 I did too, but I yep. just. Me too. Um, okay. I, I did notice um, there was a category uh, SCEMS Board of Oversight that wasn't appointed. Are we are we hol holding on that for now? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, we're. You know what? I saw I saw some mail, but I didn't. I don't see it here right now. I must have missed it somewhere. Do we have mail? Yes. Okay. Chris, do you, um, I don't see the mail. We'll come back. Sure. It, it's at the end of the main packet. I, again, I'm very sorry about all of the uh, packet additions that happened this week. It's a little bit of a hectic time of year, unfortunately. Um, so the mail list this week contained four things. Uh, one of them was a memo from myself, um, just describing what I, I sent all of you in an email last week already, but I just wanted to have it put in a memo for the record um, regarding a phone call I had with a resident on Porter Street. Um, she just had some frustrations that she wanted to express and you can you can read about those in the memorandum uh, involving funding for town projects and um, affordability in general. So um, I didn't know if the board wanted an opportunity to respond to that at all or um, if you wanted any part of it read for the record. Um. What do you want to do about that? Um, her point summary is that uh, she doesn't agree to the spending or she doesn't agree to, is this the mayor, um, the new pro? 
I'm not sure it, exactly. It was mainly just that the taxes are getting high, right? Is that the, and her, her cost for everything. And I, that was a large part of it, yes. I think, I think every time our sewer bills go out, we definitely get, you know, mail and concern from the residents that, you know, rates are high. I, I can't, I can't not agree with that. They are, and it's been, it's been a fortune to um, to upgrade our infrastructure. It's very expensive to run a town. It's very expensive to do infrastructure. I, I sympathize. If there's other ways that the town wants to look at uh, subsidizing um, or means testing uh, seniors, because not all seniors are you know on a I mean, they're on fixed income, but some are, you know, there could is, be on all there different. Is a break. There is a break. Yeah. So I think, um, you know, this, the sewer is $22 million of repair and it's, and it's very costly. We've got, you know, the lowest interest rate we could, the longest loan we could, um, but it, it's a fortune to do this work and it needed to be done. It hadn't been addressed. And again, if we do not take action to start uh, to raise taxes enough to put money aside in capital stabilization um, and put money aside for maintenance on all of our buildings, we're just going to be in the same cycle of having to have dramatic raises in, in fees on different things because we don't have the money to fix them. I wish we had addressed that sewer project 25 years ago, but you know we kept the rates low and the and the tax is low, and and when we had to go pay for it, it was twice as expensive as if we'd done it before. So, it is frustrating, and I I do feel for residents that have to pay high sewer rates and high taxes. It we're doing everything we can to make sure that we're as efficient as possible, and that we're doing the right thing with the taxpayers' money, and making sure that their infrastructure is strong and secure for years to come so we're not missing permit and paying fines I wish I had a better answer but. I I am willing to go visit with her and explain that all of us are out straight writing grants oh, we're, yeah. we're hustling grants all the time um the problem is it costs it like you said it costs a lot for the town and it also because we need a tax base we are promoting businesses to come and yeah. you know we are particular about our businesses because we want higher taxes from them but you know we are promoting businesses coming and so there is there we're, upsetting it. we're you know the, it, it's hard to it, say that you you want lower taxes but then you don't want businesses either there so. was a, a great article by al norman yep uh, the papers, show that we were trying to that we were doing a lot that and if, it was taking a lot of the industry and the businesses um, because we're business friendly and we we recognize that we need that that infrastructure and that industry to to help we balance we, the tax bill. I was just going to say it's a balance. We have about a third of our base is agriculture, about a third of our base is residential, and about a third of our base is industrial commercial. And we've worked so hard to make sure that that balance stays. And that's how come we're. Actually, you know, compared to other communities, we're pretty stable. Mm -hmm. It's just that the cost of doing business is just gross. I mean, yeah, and we struggle with that every day. It is a year-round effort to manage the budget now. Yeah. When I first started, you taught, you did the budget for three or four months. That's it. Yeah. No, you know, we'd start at the MMA and go through it, whip through it, and then fight with the finance committee. And it was done by April. But now it is, we're working together, but it's a year round thing. The finance committee just doesn't meet for three or four months. They oh, meet they year round and there's nothing we can do about it. So anyway, um, I, Chris, thank you for taking the information and I will find that letter. It's here somewhere. And I, I keep moving my papers around and I'm losing stuff, but I will talk to this lady too, to make sure she's okay. Um, moving on, items unanticipated. We have the library situation here. Did we deal with the resignation last time? No. Oh, we no, did. we have a resignation. We do. Um, I uh, would it? like to, yes, would you pre please read it? So this is from, uh, uh, from Raina Kilsbed. 
and her uh, she has resigned from the um, Deerfield Elementary School Committee. She had just just gotten hired, but she was fortunate enough to elected. Oh, just excuse me, just got elected, but also just got hired um, at the uh, Frontier um, Element uh, Frontier High School teaching uh, chemistry to our children. So she's very excited to take on that position, and because um, because she is. Uh, an employee, she can also serve on the school committee. So in the same district. So there has been some question on that. But anyways, um, she she has uh, given her resignation. So we're we're uh, looking actively looking for a replacement for this year until the next coming election. So if there's anybody that is serving now in the PTA or is involved in or really wants to take a year and um, see what it's like to serve on the school committee and um, help our community and help our children um, and the administration run a wonderful elementary school. Uh, we would love to hear from you. So if you're interested, please reach out to the um, Chris Nolan or, or Casey or, or reach out to any of us and we'd love to um, hear from you. Um, we also um, have a resignation from um, John Sis, which I'm trying to find. Yes, I'd just like to thank Raina because I know she um, she was excited. Is an amazing uh, candidate, and uh, she was excited. Was going to be a great member um, for our kids, and uh, so. But we wish her luck in uh, teaching chemistry. Yeah, that'll be a that'll be a challenge. <laughs> yes, yes, she's very excited about it. So that's um, we're very happy to have her in the district for sure. Okay, so somewhere, does someone find yeah. John's? Uh, from June 1st, I have it in my basket, I think, or maybe I put it in here somewhere. Um, so that was a June 1st letter, correct? Uh, well, I saw it, I, I saw it, and I, it here. I misplaced it here somewhere. I've got it. Um, you got it? Yep. So it's um, to the, to the uh, select board. Um, after this. serving for many years on the Deerfield Memorial Memorial Day Committee, I'm announcing my retirement effective June 30th, 2023. This also includes the positions of veteran grave officer um, and chairman of the veteran street sign program. I'd like to thank you and the staff um, and all those who have participated in and supported the events for our veterans on Memorial Day and throughout the year. It's been an absolute pleasure working with all of you, and it's been a huge pleasure. And we've been so grateful to have um, John Sis heading up that that um, committee and doing all the work he's done for so many years um, on behalf of our veterans and and residents. And uh, he's put together a great team, and there there is a great committee and. There's a uh, new chairman involved, so he's he's left everybody in really good hands, and we we all thanked him a lot at the um, at the Memorial Day events this year. So it's been wonderful. I yeah, I want to say that John that John has been wonderful to work with over the years, and he's done an amazing amount of work, making sure that it was always a seamless event every mm -hmm. year. So Incredible. thank you, John. I, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I I want to just say that. I met John last year, last year's Memorial Day um, event, and uh, it's obvious to me that the reason why Deerfield does such a nice job with these things is because John was a great organizer and uh, yeah. everything comes off well. It's very respectful, and yeah. um, so we're going to miss him. Yeah, for sure. He cares deeply. I was just going to say it was very personal. Yeah. Lovely event. Yep. Amazing man. Okay. Um, Authorization of the invoice number three to um, Johnson Roberts Associates Incorporated Architects for the Deerfield Tilton Library. Tim, um, do you have a recommendation on this? Um, I do. I believe that uh, we should support it. And as soon as we get the uh, revised contract in place, we should pay the bill. <laughs> um, so I... So um, you want us to vote this based on a revised contract, right? Right. Okay. Um, would you make that motion then? Make a motion that we approve this uh, pending the, the uh, completion of the revised contract for the library, Tilton Library project. Okay. Um, do you second that, Chris? Yes, I'll second that. All right. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nest, aye. There you go. 
Oh, thanks. Um, next item on the unanticipated is signing the memorandum of understanding between South County Senior Center and Franklin Regional Council Governments for Age Friendly Planning. And um, I believe, Chris, you said you clarified for us that um, this is for this year, the coming year, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's uh, effective July 1st. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding between the town of Deerfield and South County Senior Center and Franklin Regional Council of Governments for, for age friendly planning for 2024. Or, Fiscal year. And that's fiscal 24. year. Yeah. yeah. FY Second. That's why it keeps recurring. Second. Yeah. Because I, I thought we did this. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think because there was one initial version and then there was an updated version a few months later. And then that all expired in June anyway. So now it's time for the full year. <laughs> okay. All right. All those um, in favor? Tim L. G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. I know, but uh, I'll just uh, add that if we've already paid any money based on the last thing we signed, that we don't duplicate that effort. <laughs> <laughs> Only send one check. No, yeah. don't pay anything. No. I know. <laughs> but, but I'm getting punchy. Well, <laughs> the 2023. We must have voted the 2022 or 2023, okay. and then we now have the 24. So, did you sign it? Yes, yeah, right. I signed We're it. Good. We're good, right? Okay. okay. Um, the last item that we need to sign is the uh, memorandum of understanding for the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District for sludge hauling and disposal transfer station hauling services. And Janamine has so always paid. done a really great job. And unfortunately, the prices keep going up, but these are the fees that are expensive. These are, the, these are what's driving the price of your sewer bill, really. For sure. Um, you knew that sludge was so valuable. There's only one entity and, and they shut down. I mean, they're like low, just shut off. And then what do you do? I don't know what we're going to do. Is it? I don't it's, know. It's bad. It's very bad. Um, this is, they, we brought this up at the MA. Yeah. And everybody's in the same boat. They are. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Tim Hill, G, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Um, there was one item under mail that I'm not sure if the board wanted a chance to acknowledge, but it was the um, financial contribution from Deerfield Academy. Yes. Um, yes. That yes. was received in the amount of $72,461.50 um, as part of their. Uh, second final payment for the Academy's contribution to the town for the FY23 year. Thank them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're always appreciative of cash. <laughs> helps. Anything helps? Well, while we were signing, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that I got a call from uh, Senator Markey's office on um, Monday and um, Washington DC office, his aide called to tell us that um, our request for $4 million for the 1888 building had been included in his legislation to the Senate. It's in the budget being considered. Um, and that although it's, although it's um, not a guarantee that anything will happen, um, Good for he said that, uh, that because it's in the budget, it's not the type of thing that's going to end up getting fought over. And there were only three projects approved for Massachusetts. Oh, and wow. this was one of them. That's fantastic. For, for his office. So we have support both in the House and the Senate for this grant. And he said that as long as we get a budget, um, it's a real budget out of Congress, that chances are good that this will come through. That'd be great. Um, so... Yeah, I was great pretty news. excited about that. That's great. I mean, we heard from Jim McGovern earlier, but this one was a little more definite. So, yeah, um, I have to say that that's really exciting. That is. It's so nice that we're having these great relationships with our representatives. They're doing a lot of good work on, on behalf of Deerfield. I think it's because the group of people that are all working together, you, Tim, Carolyn, and Denise Mason, and um, it's just it's good to see. Really good to see. Uh, 
Well, people are working really hard yeah. to get a lot of grants and, and it's really been helpful that, um, you know, part of these is writing a story. You got to develop the story, but you got to write the story do the research. and do the research. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been very helpful that Tim yeah. is really it's doing helpful. so much writing um, because that, you know, that's the biggest part of time consuming for our I staff. Also want to just, you know, thank, in addition to Denise, who's working with me on this a lot, um, Casey, obviously, and, and mm -hmm. Julie Chalfant was very valuable in, right. in gathering the, the factual and financial aspects of things. So wonderful. It's been a good team effort. Yeah. There's a lot of people participating effort. together, working together really well. And, um, you know, our CCI connecting community in, in this um, initiative is really, that's really doing a lot. It is. Um, people are trying to not duplicate efforts and efforts are really feeding off each other and there is better communication. Also, I just want to thank Jim McGovern because he came and met with us and he pointed the direct, he, he said, you guys got a really good idea here yeah. and uh, you also have a plan. And then he and his staff worked with us to point us in the right direction on a few things. And then we started to figure out some things. And so uh, thanks, Jim. Yeah. And Colby's been great, great help. Yeah, yeah Colby. Yeah. Fabulous. Yep. Um, and they came and walked in the rain. You know. <laughs> no, there, it didn't rain during our, I our know, parade. It, it was really good. It was wet beforehand. Oh, it was soaking <laughs> wet before and soaking wet after. No. Um, but it was really nice. The actual parade. Clouds was, parted. For us. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, wa weatherproofing and waterproofing our float was <laughs> such a drag. A great idea. You did such a good job with well, that. Well, God, I was, you know, thankful that it didn't rain, but uh, glad that we made the insurance insurance well, yeah. payment. Well, and kept this dry beforehand. And then you know? Trevor coming in and said, hey, yeah, you know, we should get some tarps. Oh, yeah, I got some of those at home. That was hugely helpful. <laughs> that made all the difference. Yeah. You know, oh yeah, duh. I've got some brand new types at home. Uh, oh, well, wow. that anyway, fun. that was really fun. I have all the kids' um, posters in my living room, spread out, drying out, dry. You know, no, they were they were all waterproof. They were, they were protected. They were protected. Um, I just have to figure out from with Peter um, Thomas how to archive them properly. Yeah, for the four hundred, and we have all the bells. Like I said, we put a roof on instead of hanging the bells but we have all the bells 400 no gonna quite make so it. we are archiving all the cute bells from the 350 bells from the kids and, the, and then all the posters that all the kids so we had them inside because of the rain we had them inside and outside and um but they were all protected by plastic and um it was really nice you couldn't see them as well but could do a 375 hey if i make it to yeah, I know. If I make it to 400, I'm going to be, I'm going to be getting the town cane too, because I'll be right. 114. Well, there's, <laughs> there is a, um, a resident, if I understand this right, is, is 108. Oh, 108. 108. Eight. Yeah. And then we got to get that cane down there. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I believe it's the same one, but now we have a pin. Uh, yeah. It's Stella, correct? I think so. I'm almost positive. Yeah. And because I remember when I first, became a select board member and a member on the board of oversight we presented her at the senior center with her family and mm -hmm. then but well, i believe it is it's still her yeah. uh, if i if i remember right and um but we should get her the pin yeah yeah we got to get her that pin mm -hmm. um chris you got to order it before friday oh, here oh the pin's oh, here. here they want to they want to fix it i'm just awarded to her and then get it fixed rather than wait until oh, we pin? get the cane fixed. No, the cane has got a little ding on it. Oh, yeah, stuff. that just could, yeah. that stays with us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we can fix that after yep. the ceremony. For sure. And All right. I, I want to put in a good word for the placeholder of employment policies, citizen interest forms, job descriptions, related documents, you know, um, for all of our jobs, not just the EMS. Um, you know, it'd be nice if we had these things ready to hand instead of having to invent them every time we have them. I know, every time. I know. But at least, adjourn. Yes. Second. Second. <laughs> All right. No further discussion. All those in favor. Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Everyone have a good night. Yes. Have a good, good night. Weekend. Thanks, Chris. Fourth of July.